Chattanooga has already secured a playoff bid. Today, they try and lock up their first ever unbeaten Southern Conference season. Chattanooga, Furman, coming up next, live on ASN. What a beautiful setting, just a couple of miles south of the south. Chattanooga has already secured a playoff bid. Today, they try and lock up their first ever unbeaten Southern Conference season. Chattanooga, Furman, coming up next, live on ASN. What a beautiful setting, just a couple of miles south of the South Carolina, North Carolina border. We're in Greenville, South Carolina for Chattanooga and Furman. The Mox, the only unbeaten team in league play. Darren Goldwater and Corey Miller welcoming you to Paladin Stadium. The Mox secured an outright championship in the Southern Conference and a playoff berth two weeks ago. So if you think this last game of the regular season means nothing, you are wrong. Russ Schusman stresses he needs to go into the playoffs with some confidence. A win today could possibly get him a first round bye as well. And he's done a great job of getting his guys ready to play in some big games. This is a big game. Make no mistake about it. I know you can say it means nothing, but when you talk about momentum, when you talk about getting better, gaining some speed going into the playoffs, you want to win this game today. Why? Because Furman has played much better the last couple of weeks, and I think he'll have them ready to go. The Mox, no question. The best team in the Southern Conference and over the last nine weeks they've lost once only to the University of Tennessee. This run eight of their last uh, nine games has pushed them into the top ten in the coaches poll. It's the highest they've ever been ranked. It matches the number nine ranking for the 1992 Chattanooga Mox. The reason they have gotten here, the offensive play of the reigning Offensive Player of the Year, son of the head coach, Jacob Houston. Jacob Houston is a player. That's right. He can run the football. He's smart. He's a coach's son. That's right. He has a high football IQ. He makes the right decisions at the line of scrimmage. And yes, Darren, he can throw balls like this on a dime over his shoulder, making big plays. We saw that, by the way, down at the Citadel. He's a guy, if they're going to win and be successful in the playoffs, it's going to start with Jacob Houston. Nearly 8,000 total yards, still with an entire year to play for Houston. He is fifth all-time in the Southern Conference in total yards. 
Chattanooga was picked to win the league. Furman was picked to finish second in the league, but it hasn't gone that way this year for the Paladins. They have been riddled by injury. The good news for the Paladins, the last two weeks they have been on fire. They're playing well. Sometimes you find a gem based on injury. That, that gem is P.J. Blaze Jowski. That's right, a quarterback, some liken him to Houston. He can run it. He can throw it. When you look at those numbers the last two weeks, been spectacular. Of course, last week, 15 of 15, 305 yards, two touchdowns. This guy is going to be a really good football player. When you talk about a freshman, he's really good. And Furman got to be excited about the future of this quarterback. Well, we are mid-November, so it is a somewhat chilly day, a little bit warmer than expected in the low 50s for the regular season finale and senior day here. The Paladins and the Mox. A lot was expected out of this Paladins team. The Mox and Paladins both finished as part of a three-way tie atop the Southern Conference last year. But because of injuries, that just wasn't the case. Meanwhile, the Chattanooga graduate, Russ Huseman, six years ago took over this program with a motto of restore the glory. Well, they have certainly done that. Back to the playoffs for the first time in 30 years. Last year's coach of the year, likely the coach of the year in the Southern Conference this year, has taken Chattanooga back to exactly where they needed to be back in the playoffs, the place they thought they deserved to be last year. Bruce Fowler's team took that playoff spot from them last year. A strong run at the back end of the regular season pushed Bruce Fowler's club to get the auto bid in the Southern Conference. And a lot of credit goes to Bruce Fowler this year, Corey. His ability to keep his team motivated despite the fact that they at one point lost eight straight games, that's been a feat in and of itself. Well, you talk about the injuries and that, that happened all year long. And it's tough on a coach because you don't expect that. You know injuries are a part of the football game, but you got to get guys ready. That's why your second team, your third team guys, they have to prepare as though they are the starter. And Bruce Fowler's done a nice job of keeping these guys confident, fired up, and ready to go. And of course, when you talk about a guy like P.J. Blazowski, he was on the bench. But look at what he's doing right now. So I, kudos to the head coach for keeping Furman very, very focused. The Mox will return the opening kickoff and put on display an offense that in the Southern Conference has been unequaled by any other in the league. And the true freshman, John Croft Hollingsworth, J.C. Hollingsworth will get us underway. Kind of epitomizes the year for the Paladins Hollingsworth does. He's been up and down, but when they've needed him with a strong leg, he's come through. A couple of dangerous return men, Bagley and Marquise Green deep for the Mox. True freshman Ricardre Bagley will start this game from the two. And Bagley will cut it out to the sideline. J.C. Hollingsworth will bump him out of bounds. It'll be good field position for the Mox, who will start just shy of the 40. Chattanooga native Jacob Huseman, the redshirt junior, and a two-time captain despite only being a junior. He's on the Peyton watch list, which goes to the best FCS player nationally. A remarkable season on the heels of an Offensive Player of the Year campaign a year ago. A win today will make him the winningest quarterback in Chattanooga history. He's got 21 wins and 31 starts. Fessel Shafat, the All-American tight end, was the motion man. He seals the edge for Huseman, who dumps it off to a wide open freshman, Alfonso Stewart, 14 yards on first down. And that's what you have to be concerned about is Jacob Houston's ability to run the football out of that zone read fate. You can see it right there, but he's going down the line of scrimmage looking to throw the football. I remember the Citadel game, first play of the game. This was the call, and they had a wide open guy down the field because they were thinking Houston was going to run the ball. He has that ability to make a defense make mistakes. He averages 60 yards a game on the ground. And his ability to handle the offensive sets and formations is what makes him so dangerous. Here he goes on a designed run, three yards, as Jamari Milliken, the redshirt sophomore corner, comes up to make the stop. Nice defensive play by Furman right there. They go away from the motion. Again, they like to window dress. They like to get the defense thinking we're going one way. They go the backside, but right there, the backside of the defense of Furman stayed very disciplined. A couple of great defensive linemen in this game. Gary Wilkins three-time all-conference performer. He is fifth all-time at Furman with 15 and a half sacks. They'll bluff it. Huseman throws and a diving grab made at the 30 by Alfonso Stewart. 
good for an eight yard pick up on a first down. Really nice throw there by Houston. Again, under pressure, put the ball where it had to be low and outside. And Stewart makes a nice grab. You can see right there the pressure comes. Look at that catch. Get down low, bring the ball in. Nice throw and a nice first down for the Mox. You can see the head roll from Marcus McMorris. Had to be deflating. Looked like Teheran Tyson was the target. And then a diving catch made for a first down. Borashadi, the motion man on the jet sweep. He's got it sprinting his way down for an eight yard run. TJ Warren, a Chattanooga native, corrals him around the shoulder pads. This zone read offense is really <laughs> tough to defend. I mean, because you got so much action, counter action, and get a guy like Borashadi right here going to get the football to try to get on the outside with great speed. Your defense has to be disciplined. You got to play contained, try to force the ball back on the inside. Your linebacker's got to scrape in the field. You just got to be very disciplined as a defense to stop this type of offense. Chattanooga is marching down the field. Keon Williams in a pile, stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain, first time the Furman defense has won a play. And we should point out here, Furman is without maybe the second best defensive player in the Southern Conference. Corey Magwood leads the team, leads the league, sixth at the FCS level with over 11 tackles a game. But Brad Minter on the stop there, playing in Magwood's place. Sprained an ankle late last week, didn't practice all week. And the leading tackler in the league, unavailable. Really good player, smart football player. Just kind of a, kind of a guy that likes to be around the football. He finds himself in great positions. They're going to miss him today. First down for Boris Shotty. They swung one out to him. Pick up a seven. Talking about Corey Magwood. He's that guy that, again, you need a quarterback of the defense. We talked about the two quarterbacks in our pregame, but you have to have a quarterback on the defense. Corey Magwood is that guy. He is that, that engine, that motor. He's fast. He makes great tackles in the open field. Of course, we saw him walking around in that boot. They're going to miss him today. To fill in, oh, you got some big shoes to fill. No doubt about that. I should call him a replacement, not the fill-in. Next man up. Jacob Huseman finds the hole, gets away from Olasunya. It's an 11-yard run, first and goal. He's just one of those throwback types of quarterbacks. I mean, he's, when we talk to him after the Citadel game, he just he sounds like a coach, says the right things. While I said early on, he has a high football IQ. He just got that toughness about him. Runs the ball very hard. Huseman keeps it again, bounce down. <laughs> 72 total touchdowns for Jacob Huseman and not only three complete years, that's best in Chattanooga history. Inching up on B.J. Coleman's career passing touchdown record. Coleman was a great one and a transfer in from Tennessee who got a shot at the NFL. Second down and goal. It's the bruiser, Keon Williams. Wrangled after a pickup of two. This Furman defense is stiffening up here in the red zone. And you know, you give us some plays. Started with the kickoff return, and the Mox has done a really good job of a play call and moving the ball down the field. But this is where you gotta toughen up. This is where you gotta, there it's called the backbone of your defense. Your nose in the dirt, you gotta get penetration, and you also have to be aware of play action passes down here in the red zone. Furman jumped. Maybe someone calls him to jump. We'll see in just a moment. Ball start, number 73 on the offense. Five yard field, still third down. Partner all over it, Brandon Morgan, the senior right tackle. That helps you out, right? You back it up five yards, and now that changes the play calling. A little bit here for Chattanooga. Which is when you got a guy like Jacob Huseman, you can run it, you can pass it, that same kind of down the line of scrimmage, play action fake, trying to suck up that secondary guy because he gets nosy. So I'm interested to see what they call here third and goal. Spreading the field with three receivers. Huseman under pressure, lobs one for Fessel Shafat, who lunges out at the goal line, but he's short. They'll mark him just shy of the goal line. It'll be fourth and goal. 
Well, when you got so kind of wrapped up, you know, you might want to go go for him. You can see right here, a patient Jacob Houston right here, but again, great defense by Furman holding him out of the end zone. I mean, that was really, really close. Try to stretch it across that line of scrimmage of the goal line, I should say, but not able to get it done. So here's a huge fourth down for Furman. Fourth and goal from just outside of the end zone. Huseman, touchdown. And the mocks cap off the first drive that ate up five and a half minutes with a six nothing lead. Well, I think everybody and their grandmother knew who's gonna get this football fourth and inches or fourth and goal. That guy right there, Jacob Hughes, was gonna run that all the way. There was no doubt about that. He gets it in the end zone, but that was very, very close on that fourth down play. 25th career rushing touchdown for Houston, who will just continue to pile on the numbers for an entire year after this. And that leads to Ribeiro to add yet another extra point. 47th of the year, which continues to build on his Chattanooga record. Jacob Huseman, about as perfect as you could be on the opening drive. Hit all four passes for 41 yards, and he caps it with a rushing touchdown. Ninth rushing touchdown of the year for the likely offensive player of the year. And the team that's won eight of their last nine is on the board first. Hi, I'm Rob Lowe, and I have DirecTV. And I'm super creepy Rob Lowe, and I have cable. With DirecTV, you get 99% signal reliability. Now that's reliable. My cable's out, so I'm down at the rec center watching folks swim. I love that I can watch my shows and be worry-free. And I love the smell of other people's hair. Don't be like this me. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Hey, Banks. Have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son, or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. <laughs> Is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey, man, T. Who the It's a tearjerker! I always, I mean, I look. Chattanooga has never been unbeaten through an entire Southern Conference season. That's one of the many milestones that is on the line today as they close out the regular season at Furman. And a little bit of irony, Furman is the team that's won more league championships than any other, including last year, and is the winningest program in Southern Conference history. A couple yards deep here, Richard Hayes is going to take this one out. Hayes upended shy of the 20. Corey, we can talk a lot about the defense and the offense for the Mox. Maybe the thing that makes them the most special is the fact that they dominate every aspect of special teams, and Furman will start shy of the 20. No doubt about that. Very, very good. Look at that score drop right there, Dan. Pretty nice, 10 plays, 58 yards, and that was basically all about Jacob Houston, 4 for 4. 41 yards, of course, had four rushes, I believe, for 15 yards. So, if you want to beat Chattanooga, you better stop <laughs> Jacob Eastman. <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs> and if you want to beat the Paladins, you got to stop P.J. Blaze Jowski, who is somewhat of a miniature Jacob Eastman. 
Gives it off on first down. The run will go for four yards to the senior back, Hank McLeod. He's been bothered by an elbow injury. He dislocated that early on in the year and some hamstring trouble as well. Last two weeks, Blaze Jowski has completed 80% of his passes. The majority of his numbers have come in the last three weeks. So good last week, he was the National Freshman of the Week, according to the Sports Network. 15 out of 15 last week, a new Southern Conference record. First pass attempt of the day, make it 16 straight. Completion of the redshirt junior Snellings, who crawls his way for 10 yards. It should have been the offensive player of the week, because any time you complete 15 of 15, now the last 16, you should be player of the week, period. P.J. Blaze Jowski getting a nice three-step drop right in. The ball is out. Great throw on the outside. Puts the ball where he needs to put, put it. This guy, I'm going to tell you right now, he has a future in front of him. And you're going to see passing numbers go up because he can throw the football. I like how they kind of revamp this offense just to fit P.J. Blaze Jowski. Blaze Jowski runs away from Freeman. Now Blaze Jowski's got some space. The true freshman out of Florida. Pushed out of bounds around the 15. As they say back in the P-Town, that's Paceland, by the way. That's what's up. <laughs> when you think about throwing the football, he can run it. He can hurt you with his legs. You call him the, the mini Jacob Houston. But look what he did right there. Down the line of scrimmage. Nice speed. Great read, but great blocking, too, on the outside. Nice block by Big Boy. That's all about Blaze Jowski. Yeah, he doesn't have the speed to get all the way to the house. But, again, he puts Furman in great position and striking distance, distance to put points on the board. Career best 46-yard run. Paladins into the red zone. Screen pass to McLeod. Cuts it downfield, down to the nine. He was wrapped at the ankles by one of the top freshmen in the league, Lucas Webb. I like what they're doing. Again, run the ball, quick passing game. Little just toss plays out to the back, which kind of serves as a run and play as sweep. And make it short, a uh, second and short. And that's what you want to do. I really like the last two weeks how this team has called the offense. It'll be McLeod once again. Tough sledding through the middle of that line against the second best rushing defense in the Southern Conference. Picked up a yard to bring up third and one. Just a counter play right here. You can see the, the guard pull, the fullback pull. They call it the counter OF. O guard pulls the fullback, comes and kicks out. Counter OF right there to make it third and short. They need the six. Russ Huseman, the head coach for the Mox, says the thing that's been impressive about Blaze Jowski, how he's been able to handle different situations as the year's gone along. He changes the play. McLeod is bounced down by the corner D. Virgin, and he'll be about half a yard shy of first down. Bobby Farmer, you have nothing to lose. You need to go for it. We're going to measure right here. If we made the first down, it'll be a little bit short. But Davis Toll, <laughs> we talked a lot about this guy in weeks past. 54 tackles, 17 tackles for loss, 10 and a half sacks leaves the SoCon. This is the guy that's acting. When we talk about NFL potential Southern Conference players, well, that's one guy right there that I think is going to be that third, fourth round type guy there, Davis Toll. You can see Furman's just shy. A lot of people agree with you. You got Jaquaski Tart out of Samford, which will probably be the highest pick in the NFL draft coming out of the Southern Conference. Davis Tull, potentially the second pick out of the Southern Conference in the draft. He's got 37 career sacks. That is an all-time record in the Southern Conference. And he's pushing up on an all-time NCAA record at any level. He is five sacks shy of that. Well, the thing that he's going to have to play is outside linebacker. I, I like him going to a team that employs a 3-4 defense. He can rush the passer. He's very fast and uh, very athletic, so uh, he has a bright future in front of him. Kane, the fullback, needing half a yard. It'll be Blaze Jowski pushed by Kane, first in goal Paladins. Nice play call there. You know what I like about this? They get on the center. So many people, fourth and inches, third and inches, they want to go back to go forward. I don't understand that concept, but right here you got a runner like Blaze Jowski, Get him the football under center. Great push by the offensive line. First down, first and goal for the Paladins. 
He's accounted for 70 yards, Blaze Jasky has on the opening drive. And it'll be the senior McLeod on senior day who picks up two to get inside of the two. A lot was expected out of McLeod coming into the year. Preseason, first team selection in the Southern Conference. He's rushed for over 2,000 yards in his career. But injuries have just taken him out of play consistently. Only 100-yard day this year. That's been a story for the Paladins all year. Injuries, but they've battled through them. In the last three weeks, they're playing their best football of the year. Watch Snellings right here off his own read. Instead, how about McLeod spinning his way towards the goal line with no signal. He's going to be short. Well, again, I still think it's four down territory if you're Furman. And that was real close. Of course, it got wadded up in there. Hard to see if he got into the end zone. But when you got players, you got, of course, P.J. Blasiowski out of the zone read. You, you can have a jump ball scenario, a little fade, back shoulder throw. So a lot of options right here. Well, you try to run it right back up the gut with a quarterback sneak. I like the quarterback sneak. Furman alumnus, fourth-year head coach, Bruce Fowler. Watch over the right guard right here. Blaze Jowski goes left side. Touchdown, Paladin. There's the signal. Initially, Dan, I don't think he was in, but the uh, second effort gave him the touchdown. Blaze Jowski. I was saying right guard because it was uncovered. You had a guy kind of off the ball right there, but they went the opposite way, and it worked. Good power right here, good leg drive. Guys are pushing, but watch the second. Oh, right there, pull him on in. He is on for the touchdown. Look to me on the initial push towards the goal line, he extended over at first. First quarter has gone flying by. Two long drives, zero incompletions, and P.J. Blaze Jowski has picked up where he left off. Blaze Jowski's hit his last 17 passes now, dating back to last week. His 46-yard run, the biggest play of the drive, and the touchdown run, the fourth of his career. We're tied late in the first quarter. Coke Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. Huh, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Yeah, everybody knows that. Well, did you know that playing cards with Kenny Rogers gets old pretty fast? You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. What? You get it. Don't I you? get the gist, yeah. yeah. Okay. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. P.J. Blaze Jowski starting his seventh consecutive game has been part of the story of late for the Paladins, but it's part of the bigger story for Furman. In the gray hat, Reese Hannon, starting quarterback, two-year captain, only a junior, went down with a fractured foot in the first game. Then it was Dylan Woodruff. Then it was P.J. Blaze Jowski, 
Oh, look at this. Indecision for Marquise Green. And the indecision leads to a little bit of a seam. There's a flag down as Green bursts his way out close to the 40. What else coming back? Got a little cheating on the play. Marquise <laughs> Green on the first penalty flag now. You saw Marquise Green duck under the tackle. Attack with He's like short, so he kind of went underneath him. Yeah, 5'7". Yeah. Well, if you did start at the beginning of the season for Furman, we showed you start the, the starting quarterback. During the return, holding number 19 on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. I will say this. I mean, you know, he's out because a fractured foot. Didn't you see what Blaze Jowski <laughs> has done and is doing? You got to be a little bit concerned. I mean, he's coming back and be like, hey, it's going to be some competition next year because Blaze Jowski has grown up right in front of our eyes, and he's doing it with his legs and there and with his arms. So I know you want to feel good for him and be happy for him, but as a player, former player, I tell you, I'd be a little nervous. Well, Bruce Fowler says Reese Hannon is like an extension of the coaching staff. He's been great not only with the quarterbacks, but keeping the morale up on the team. The defense has been crippled by injuries as well. Wouldn't know it on that play. The senior Gary Wilkins chased it down and plowed Williams into the ground. No gain. A nice penetration there by the Furman defense. Have, they have the mocks backed up right here, playing with nice fire, nice energy on this cool November day. Great football weather, by the way. You got your gloves on, you got your sweatpants, you good to go today? They're not on now, but they're here just in case. Yeah. We're in the low 50s. By the end of the game, we could dip into the mid to high 40s. Huge difference. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Huseman, design draw, sprints away from one and dives underneath Trey Robinson. Robinson playing in his third straight game after he missed three because of Mono. It'll be third and three. Everything is about trickeration, fool the defense. They fake the screen right here, and it's a design run, as you said, quarterback draw. Houston does a nice job of getting nice yardage right there on the play. But now it's third down. You got about third medium. And it's still a run pass type of down especially with Houston back there at quarterback. Keep an eye on the slot, bottom of your screen. That's the big target, 6'5", tight end, Shafat. It'll be Keon Williams into the arms of Brad Minter, spinning forward for a first down. And that's all Keon Williams right there. I mean, he has such great power and leg drive and strength in that lower body. He just drug guys for the first down. They hit him before he got it, but he powered his way into the first down. Williams is part of a stable of backs for Chattanooga. Three have been mainstays all year. Williams, Derek Crane, who we expect to see today despite a bit of a sprained ankle. And we'll see some of the freshmen Bagley. Huseman pulls it, wants the deep ball to Tommy Hudson, who adjusts to the ball thrown behind him. They'll mark him down at the 46. That's the same play they ran the first play of the game. Now just bring it on the opposite side again. The cornerback got caught looking in the backfield. You got to find your receivers. It's man coverage you can see right here. This is passed all the way. He initially had good coverage. They got a little nosy and then let the receiver get behind him. There was a nice throw and a nice catch by the Mox. Better throw would have been a touchdown. That one goes for 36 yards. You have to always stay disciplined. As a player, you have to always do your job. Don't try to do too much. Williams sweeps it, cuts it downfield. Bounces off of Alfonso Stewart. He had a lot of room on the outside. He picks up six after bouncing off his own man and picks up 16 total. One thing that you're going to find with Williams, what we call yak. That's right, folks at home, yak. What are you talking about? Yards after contact. You, you saw that the initial guy hits him and he get he gets more yards wide because he's strong as I mentioned earlier the leg drive he's powerful wrap the guy up as a defender and drive him back and get him on the ground. But Williams is a tough competitor. Drive that started at their ten is now to the twenty nine of the Paladins. Now to the twenty four of the Paladins. Huseman lost the ball. Furman comes away with it. 
Come on, on the play, recovered by your pals, and it's first down, Freeman. That's what you have to do. We call it laying the wood. When you play defense, especially with a quarterback coming up in that Brian Patch, you got to get stuck. You see, he gets stuck. The hat on the ball right there. Ball is out, and Furman recovers. Great defensive play by the Paladins. By the captain and the fifth-year senior out of Newberry High School, Marcus Nick Morris. It's not just the offense that's been playing better. The Paladins are suddenly starting to win the turnover battle, and they've got the first turnover of the game late in the first quarter. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. down in game one for the fourth year head coach Bruce Fowler. It was the third time in four years he's lost his starting quarterback in the first game or first half of the second game. And it's just part of the injury storyline for the Paladins. Those five are impact players. But it is over 25 different players that have missed time this year. Snelling's dropped the ball. He felt the corner, Trevor Wright bearing down on him. And the official streak ends at 17, three shy of a firm record. Well, that ball needs to be caught, but you see Hannon right there, of course. Again, unfortunately, he is not playing, but this has been the story for Furman all year long. The injuries, the guys going down, and sometimes it just happens. I mean, you can't control it. You know it's part of the game, but you have to be able to have players ready to, to go in and fill in and, and take over at these critical positions like Blazowski has done. A very nice job playing quarterback. Tanner Skogan in the game now. He's got nowhere to run. The leading tackler, Mahasabi Wakil, plows him down. No gain, third and ten. Skogan on the run. No gain on the play, third down. Well, if you're farming, you want to try to sustain a drive here, continue to get, keep your defense rested up because they're going to be battling all day with this uh, Chattanooga offense. We know this, the offense continues to come back and bounce back even after a fumble in the last series here. But, you got to try to continue to have some good drives going and hopefully get a lead if you're firm. Going to capitalize on the game's first turnover. Play action. Here's Snelling curling in, diving for a first down. The awareness of the fourth year junior, a 12 yard pickup. Cool, calm, collected. That's what I say about PJ Blaze Jowski. Nice throw ball down. Love where it's supposed to be. You can see right here, Davis Toll gets a good jump on the ball. You get the tight end that stays in the tackle. They're not going to let Davis Toll beat him on the edge. Great job of protecting the backside, allowing Slejowski to get the ball out in the first down for Furman. 
nearing the end of a fast-moving first quarter as Skogan skips away from the first tackler and picks up three yards. Tanner Skogan on the run. What we're seeing out of the Paladins is indicative of their last three games. The team that is last in the Southern Conference in turnover margin has the first one today. The team that's been struggling all year on third down until the last couple of weeks picks up a third down in 10, picked up a fourth down on their opening drive. And wouldn't you know it, after snapping an eight game losing streak last week, the Furman Paladins are tied with the 6-0 Chattanooga Mox in league play, trying to put a damper on what has been a great regular yeah. season so far. And they fired up, man, and they want to win this football game, there, and they playing inspired football. If you talk about we got to feel good about that. Furman on the move. A quarter in the books. We are tied at seven. College football on the American Sports Network is brought to you by CokeCareers.com. Oh, what a great first quarter we've had here at Paladin Stadium. Darren Goldwater and Corey Miller, pleased you could join us today on ASN for the regular season finale and the continued maturation of PJ Blaze Jowski and a young injury riddle team for Bruce Fowler who said, yeah, I know it's cliche, but it's true. Every single day, every snap, all we want to do is get better. That's exactly what they've done over the last few weeks. Blaze Jowski on the run. It's a strike to Andre Suttles. 10 yards and a first down. Again, I'm going to beat this dead horse. I like what they're doing with Blaze Jowski, getting him on the outside. What they're doing is getting away from the pressure, the pass rush of Chattanooga, putting him on the flanks, and a really, really nice throw on the outside, and another Furman first down. A very even football game to this point. This drive coming on the heels of the only turnover of the game, the Jacob Huseman fumble. And here goes McLeod, patiently skipping to his left, then lowering his shoulder through Cedric Nettles, an eight-yard run. We're going to throw it, we're going to run it, we're going to play action you. Nice, mix up a play caller right here. Nice job of reading it, getting to the cloud and watch this finish. Boom! Falling forward there and getting more positive yards. Tell you what, they're not going to back down for Chattanooga because Chattanooga is one of the best defenses 
that I've seen in the Southern Conference this year. They got players up front, they got players on the back end, but this Furman offense is not backing down from the hype. They protect Blaze Jowski, whose ball flutters. Andre Suttles was knocked down, but that ball was deflected. Well, you're not going to get a call there because it just basically got tripped up. He got tangled up right there. So I know the fans are yelling and screaming for a pass interference right here. But again, you get pressure in the face of Blaze Jowski. And of course, he got his arm hit, but you know, they're not going to call that. Tough that? matchup for Terrell Bush, the right tackle, yeah. trying to hold off Derek Lott right there. Was that Nettles in the secondary? Yes. Who was there when the ball fell at his feet? Yeah. Yeah. Now McLeod spinning his way, needing the 38, is going to come up about a yard shy. Take the ball on the carry. Well, if you follow right here, what do you do? You got the ball, you got a nice drive going. It's going to be fourth and about one and a half. Again, you have nothing to lose. I mean, if I'm Coach Fowler, I'm throwing out everything today. Trickeration. I'm doing surprise on side. Whatever I got to do to try to win this football game, to end the season on the right note, why not go for it? And they will. One for one on fourth down in the first quarter. They need about a yard and a half here. B.J. Blazjowski, ladies and gentlemen. Nope, it's the fullback who's wrapped by Freeman. He lost a yard. Well, the redshirt junior out of Atlanta makes the play. Uh, you know what I'm going to say, go water. P.J. Like no, I don't like the call because you got a guy, the quarterback, sneak it for a yard or get him on the outside and let him run it. But a great job by the mocks right there defensively by getting penetration. That's what you got to do to stop those third and fourth shorts. You got to get guys across the line of scrimmage and play on the other side of the offense. They did a great job right there. That's what makes Chattanooga's defense so strong. They are a good eight deep up front. Of course, led by Davis Tull. So now Huseman and company will operate. Here is the freshman, Ricardre Bagley, who speeds away from Jamari Milliken and picks up six. You got to have a guy like that that's a speedster to run that outside zone. You have the inside zone, and then you have the outside zone. That outside zone is a stretch play, but you need a guy like Bagley who can stretch the field and use that burst and that speed to get on the flanks of the defense. Thought he was coming out, he's staying in. Originally a Furman commit, Bagley. Plays on this field now for the first time in his career, the final regular season game at the end of his freshman season. They'll swing him the ball here. McMorris pushed away, first down for Bagley. Still on his feet now, pushing down to the 36. And that's why he stayed in the game, because they had a play call for him right there. Bagley was going out of the game, and Coach was like, oh, no, stay in the game. But this is a weird play. They pulled the guard in the tackle to the backside and threw the ball a little zip screen on the opposite side. And Bagley does a nice job of getting good yardage right there. Again, a lot of a counter, a lot of trickeration out of this Chattanooga offense. Again, window dressing, trying to trick the eyes of the defense. So much of it is on the shoulders of Jacob Huseman. Redshirt junior, third year starter. His decision here is to give the ball off, and it picks up five yards. Keon Williams on the carry. This Chattanooga team has been excellent on the road. They've been dominant in Southern Conference play, but on the road even more so. Williams, one of the reasons why, the core group of seniors, led by Williams, Davis Tull, just a mature group that Russ Houston said, look, they can handle whatever we give them. Need the 27. Houston scans the field, comes back for a completion down close to the 20. Nick Miller was right there, but it moves the chain. Nice throw by Jacob Houston right there. And a good route. Hustle runner, really nice route. Ran off the corner. Good play action fake right there. Nice throw the balls on the outside where it's supposed to be. Because he throws that ball on the inside there and that ball is picked. 
Really nice throw, but a nice route, too, by the receiver Hudson to come back to the football. Second catch of the day for Hudson. He's got 46 yards. It's Huseman. That middle opened up for Huseman. And Trey Robinson makes the stop. It'll be a 10-yard run. Try to figure out what happened to the middle linebackers right there because they followed the, uh, the fake to the back right there and it opened up the middle of that defense like the Red Sea. Houston had a rushing touchdown on the first drive of the game and a fumble on Chattanooga's second drive. This is first and goal. Huseman all day. Nick Morris won't catch him. 13-7. That was just too easy. And very deflating for the Paladin team because you, you got a drive going. You get it a fourth and short. You don't make it. And then here comes Chattanooga straight down the field. With, again, Mr. Huseman, I'm going to start calling him Mr. because of the numbers that he's putting up. And he gets it in the end zone. Again, off the zone read, outside zone read, keeps it. And uh, Chattanooga look, looking to go up 14 to 7. If you're going to call him Mr. Huseman, what are you going to call his dad, the head coach, Russ Huseman? I'm going to call him Russ. The coach of the year? No, because Russ is not running and throwing. <laughs> the guy that's making the plays on the field is Jacob Huseman because he can run it and he can throw it. You can see look, number 10 goes down in the inside. Where are you going, son? Don't be nosy through your job, because when you make a mistake, guess who's going to hurt you? Mr. Huseman. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. A couple of rushing touchdowns for the coach's son. Russ and Jacob Huseman, Moxar on top by a score later today, live on ASN. Florida Atlantic in search of its third Conference USA win, visiting Middle Tennessee, trying to get bowl eligible, 7 o'clock, live on ASN following this game. Chattanooga comes into this one with eight wins on the year. They've only had nine wins as a Division I team two times in their history. Special teams again making the play on Nick Miller, who's only out to the 21. 
Not a bad start for Jacob Houston. 149 total yards, couple of touchdowns. Well, seven to seven, 103 yards, with eight rushes for 46 and the two rushing touchdowns, but that's seven for seven. Maybe we'll see another quarterback that, that will not have an incompletion today, but this guy's just so good, and he takes advantage of your mistakes. And that touchdown run, the last series there, McMorris got nosy, ran on the inside. Houston keeps the ball, runs on the outside. You gotta play disciplined football when you're playing Mr. Houston because he's gonna hurt you. They'll start just shy of the 22. Blazjowski gets it out of there quickly. Subtle hit immediately. Tavon Lawson, the freshman, hits him, and Suttles comes up holding the back. That's the last thing they need, another injury, but Boys, talking about bad luck for this Furman team. Guys are going down. And, but one thing I will say, this team had high expectations this year, Darren. When they get everybody back healthy, they're going to be right back the top of the Southern Conference because they have talent on this football team. Blaze Jowski sprints out of there. Wow, Nakivi and Leslie filled the hole. No game. <laughs> Nice tackle there by Leslie, yep, dap him up. As you can see here, this is the design run. You can see guys are blocking down the field, but good open field tackle there by Leslie. Nice job. Berman went 80 yards on its opening drive for a touchdown, stalled out at the 40 of the mocks on their last possession. Here's third and short. Nellings curls in. Cedric Nettles was right there with him. And finished the play with authority. Nice reaction by the Chattanooga defense right there. You see Nettles in on that play. Trying to run the screen play to Snellings. He's pretty good at getting the double. Look at all the white shirts. And oh my lord. Is this NWA wrestling? I call that body to body suplex. Russ Houston said he wants this defense playing with energy and enthusiasm all day long. It's the first three and out they've forced. Hudson takes this one on the bounce, runs the wrong way. Tanner Skogan makes the play. They'll mark him at the 21. Well, they're getting a really nice bounce on that punt right there, so you gotta try to catch it and make something. A great coverage by the Furman special teams. The only thing that stopped the Mox to this point, their own fumble. Got it back by a seven point lead here. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins, not the shiny nail biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Giving away free prizes and free tickets for the next home game. For more information on Southern Gutter Guard, check out com. Be sure to stop by the Farm Bureau table located in the concourse.
Two-time conference coach of the year, Russ Huseman, likely in line for his third. Has 39 wins in his sixth year. Chattanooga won 37 games in 11 years prior to him taking over. And he's trying to finish off a perfect Southern Conference record as Keon Williams starts this drive with a 12-yard run. Williams a really good back, and of course you can see there, got some nice guns on him. Good speed, good power. And when you got a quarterback like Mr. Huseman, that defense has to pay attention to, it opens up running lanes for Williams. He's out to 38 yards now on the day. This has become the most balanced offense in the Southern Conference. The epitome of taking what the defense gives you. Marcus McMorris won't give him anything. He'll take three yards from him. Matt Morris must have heard me on that touchdown. I told him he's getting nosy. Something. But this time they bring pressure on the outside. And he wasn't by. You can see here he comes off the corner and he shows up right here in the screen. Nice tackle. This time Williams goes backwards instead of forwards. Nick Morris already caused a fumble back in the first quarter. This has to be a challenge for the Furman defense. After the first four games of the year, it was the Paladins, not the Mox that were top 10 nationally at the FCS level in basically every defensive category, but that's not the case now. Huseman slings one out, played perfectly by Reggie Thomas. Now, I want you to understand something what I was talking about earlier. That last drive, Huseman, Mr. Huseman threw a nice strike on the outside put the ball where it had to be. And I told you, if he throws it inside, it allows the cornerback to make a play. You see Thomas right there? He's breaking on the inside. Why? Because Mr. Houston threw the ball on the inside. But a nice play by Thomas, the cornerback for Furman. The lone upperclassman in the secondary. Brings up third and 13. Paladins rush four and get to Huseman, who escapes and finds an open man, Stewart. First down, down to the 46, into the hands of the freshman, A.K. Olasunya. This play started to break down because I think it was Wilkins who had a nice pass rush, a nice swim move over the top, forced Mr. Huseman up, but when you got to do it for that quarterback, you got to stay locked on your receivers. 26 yards, now they pick up the pace. Get one out in space to Hudson, and he gets four yards. Pass to Tommy Hudson. Like Morris is getting held on that play on the outside. I saw the jersey extended out. Play, second down. The official standing right there wouldn't give the man any luck. Corey Miller to my right, former linebacker with the Gamecocks, then with the New York Giants for almost 10 years. Doesn't like it when defensive players get held. No, I don't like that. Inside 620 to play first half. Huseman firing, knocked away again, this time by Trey Robinson. Very dangerous throw right there by Mr. Huseman. He's very fortunate that that, play, that, that pass did not get picked off. Furman defense. Both times struggling a little bit, trying to hold off the mock offense. Huge third down play. They can force the punt here to try to get the ball back in the hands of P.J. Blazjowski. Two out of three on third down today, including that big one a couple of seconds ago. Hugh Smith. Is it incomplete? It looked like it hit the ground. They're going to give the catch to Boris Shadi. I don't know about that one. I thought the ball hit the ground from my perspective up here, up top. See right here, nice route, good coverage, good break on the ball, and let's see, I thought it hit the ground right there. That's an incomplete pass. No it official did replay, no question. If you're new to the Southern Conference, there is no official replay in this conference, so the Officiating crew does not have the ability to go back and look at it. The coaches do not have the ability to challenge a play. First down for the Mox and for Huseman. Two and a half yards. 
It's unfortunate. I mean, it, I like to see replay here in the Southern Conference because that that was not an obvious incomplete pass, and sometimes the official can't see it because on the field things are happening so fast, and you can't really blame the official all the time. But as we can see, we have the luxury of having the replay in our booth. That was an incomplete pass. Tough break because that would have brought up fourth down and about yes. four. Chattanooga would have had a decision. Instead, the drive continues. Two seconds on the play clock. They just get this one off. This is Derek Crane drilled. Brad Minter, the former high school teammate of Jameis Winston down at Florida State. First stop of the day. Derek Crane on the carry. Really nice open field tackle by Brad Minter there on that play because that's that's one of the hardest plays in football. You get a guy with all this green grass. He got the, the option to go inside or outside, but you got to use those basic fundamentals of the game, those principles of tackling, breaking down, bending your knees, sliding your feet, and wrapping up. Minter did a really nice job right there getting the guy on the ground. Hugh Smith. And again, it's the freshman, Stewart. He stopped just shy. Needed the 21, and Ola Sonya. And they're picking on that freshman safety, a safety spot that's been riddled by injuries. And they're going after him a lot. Well, that's kind of a freshman mistake right there because you want to run that drag route or crossing route deep enough that you get the first down. And unfortunately, right there, a mistake that he came just about a yard, yard and a half short there. It's going to result in a field goal attempt. One of the best kickers in SoCon history here, Ribeiro. Just shy of 40 yards on this kick. And as he's done all year, he stays true. 15 out of 17 now. He's 88% on the year. Second best percentage in Southern Conference history. He's made it a two score game with 324 to play here in the opening half. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Get your I mean, you. You're not it here. Yes, I am. No, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Which planet are we living on? Right here. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Enrique Ribeiro started the year hitting his first 12 field goal attempts, which is the second longest streak in league history. He hasn't been kicking that long. He played in the first football game he ever saw when he was a freshman in high school. 
I think his weight wrong is wrong. He's bigger than 220. Yeah, well, he's good. He's 15 out of 17 now. Nick Miller. Nick Miller out across the 20. And every time the Paladins have had the football today, they have started shy of the 25-yard line. Again, a testament to the special teams of Chattanooga. Pretty big drive here for the Paladins. They do get the ball to start the second half. But after P.J. Blazjowski led a touchdown drive on the opening possession and marched him down to the 40 the next time, in order to keep up some confidence, they need to put some points on the board here. Yeah, I think they got to go back to the passing game, try to open things up. True freshman out of St. Augustine, Florida. <clears throat> Two-time reigning freshman of the week in the league. Pursued by Mahasabi Wakil. He and Davis Tull combine on the tackle. One yard run. First time we've heard uh, Davis Tull name called all day long. Again, we showed you that they were double teaming him. But this time, he comes from right at the inside and comes straight down the line of scrimmage and make the tackle. That's what you're taught. I mean, you, you play your, your assignment, and then you chase the ball flat down the line of scrimmage. But this guy... We know one thing he has is a great motor. He doesn't quit. I mean, he plays hard throughout the play. He's not that guy's going to give up on the play. He continues to play until the whistle. Doubled him again over the middle, out of the reach of Snellings, and it brings up third down and nine. Snellings got alligator arms right there. Because the safety, the footsteps of the safety was coming up to put a big hit on him. So I saw that arm go up and then quickly come back down. Instead of sacrificing his body out there, he kind of went alligator on Ball was a little high by Blaze Jowski right there as well. Big third down here, Mr. Goldwater. I'm hey. calling you Mr. now. Hey, that is high praise from the pastor of pain. Blaze Jowski keeps the play alive, and he's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. D. Virgin was in on the stop, so was Nikivian Leslie. That is a coverage sack and a timeout now for the Mox. At their first timeout, the first time, it will be a 30 second timeout. Well, they got the pressure on the outside to force Blaisdowski to step up into the pocket, and then the inside pressure came in and, and get the sack. You can see Blaisdowski trying to tell Bruce Fowler what had happened. But when you got a quarterback that's athletic and mobile, you got to do watch Davis talk. Good hands right there. He, but he's double teamed, but watch it. He steps up, but here's the inside pressure comes in now to get him on the ground. But uh, you like that, the use of the hands rule? We talked to him the last time, Citadel game. I talked about his best move, and he talked about how they practice having those violent hands, knocking the, the tight end or the tackle hands off of you, and then work your move. He praised Marcus West, who's the defensive line coach, a guy who actually was with Russ Houston when they were together at Memphis. He was playing at Memphis. John Croft Hollingsworth, beautiful kick. High, deep, and a great special teams play by the Chattanooga native, TJ Warren. Tommy Hudson took a gamble, didn't call for a fair catch. Now that's weird, they moved the ball further up. But a great punt right here, you can see nice job of covering and getting the guy down. Now they moved it back to the 29, that's about right. That's about where he caught it, and then was pushed back. One thing those punters do, I don't call them players, I don't call them athletes, I call them kickers and punters. But they have one job to do, change the field position. And that's what he did right there. Nice punt, not, nice coverage by the punt team. Forty-seven yard kick. And a chance for the Mox to extend their lead late in the half. Man, Alfonso Stewart having a big first half, but he can't get away from Marcus McMorris. Looked like he ripped the jersey after a six-yard pickup. Again, they love this play where he fakes it and runs down the line of scrimmage to give him that run pass option, but a, just a not route. And McMorris does a nice job, almost overruns it, but he corrects himself and hold on for dear life, young man. Huseman ducks inside of Minter, and he's able to pick up a yard. Furman doing a nice job that time of reading that play. 
Had two guys targeting Jacob Heisman on that play. Third down and about four. Got to get to the 39. And it'll be Houston on the keep. A first down and more for the redshirt junior. Trey Robinson Jacob on, the run. on the stop. The sophomore out of Spartanburg, not too far away from here. You almost got to have a guy that just spies on, on Jacob Heaton because right now they're going to spread you out. They're going to create running lanes for him because you got to cover down those guys. Then four wide receivers and a nice run there by Jacob Heaton. Borashati comes back to make the catch, spins off the hit from Olasanya to pick up 12 yards and move the chains. <laughs> These guys now playing with a little bit more energy than we saw in the first quarter. Borashati's been the recipient on, on several nice catches. Here comes the blitz. Minter hits him late. The throw is low. That throw is low because of Minter came on a delayed blitz. It got it to the face of Jacob Heath and caused him to kind of short hop that pass right there. But and that's what you got to do. You got to mix things up defensively, bring pressure, give them different looks. You got to try to confuse Jacob Houston, but he's such a, a student of the game, so smart. I'm sure he's a film room junkie. He's a coach's son. He understands what's going on. What's so impressive about this offense, they have the ability to have extended clock killing drives, and they have the ability to go up tempo in a two minute offense. Huseman hit by Wilkins. And it's Reggie Thomas who almost comes away with it. A lot of credit goes to Alfonso Stewart for knocking that one away. I think Stewart could have been called for passing the fish right there because that ball is going to be picked off. You can see right here, now the defensive player is basically the receiver. And watch Stewart uh, grabs him right there on the shoulder. That's, that should have been a pass in the fence on the offense. It's been a great first half for this freshman, Stewart. He makes that play. He's already got five catches on the half. He came into the day with 13 on the season. But it brings up another third down. Huseman, great protection. Not going to get caught by Danny Palmer. He runs for 16 yards. Jacob Huseman on the run. I mean, you just can't have this. I mean, you got to get pressure. You can see he's kind of spying Jacob Houston, number 72. But guess what? He's too slow. If you're going to spy Jacob Houston, you better put an athlete, a guy with some good speed that can close. You don't put a nose tackle to spy that, an athletic quarterback like Jacob Houston. You got to bring pressure. You got to get somebody in his face to make him be decisive, to make him get rid of the football. Second back-breaking third down conversion by this Mox offense in the last two drives. Jet sweep to Boris Shotty. About five and a half yards. And a timeout for the Mox with less than 40 seconds to play in the half. I mean, I like the spike concept, I really do. But you gotta put an athletic guy, linebacker, a safety type of spur. A jack, whatever you want to call it. If you want to spy someone, you better have some speed and athleticism, somebody that can close in and catch these quarterbacks. Know someone at the game today? Well, text them, take a picture, post it with the hashtag live on ASN. We might retweet the photo. You can also tag ASN by using live on ASN. That's the Twitter handle. Find him on Facebook too, backslash live on ASN. Ninth play of the drive upcoming for the Mox, who took over inside of their own 30 after a solid kick from the freshman Hollingsworth and have maneuvered a two minute offense effectively down inside of the 18 here. Huseman comes back to Fessel Shafat all day. Touchdown, Mox. 
That's a great play call. That's when you know you got a defense on his heels and confused, and, and everybody's going to run towards Jacob Heisman. The flow goes away. Well, they got a name that they call that. That I, I can't say the exact name of this play call, but they call that a something screen to Shafat right there, where he kind of blocks. Sometimes they even fall down, and then he comes across the formation. Barrow makes it 24-7. And what happens is the defense kind of gets confused because he, he, I don't know if he fell down and he blocks, but watch right here. He kind of just hides in there, he hides, and then he sneaks out. Everybody's going to the fake of Heisman, thinking he's going to run, throw it on that play side, and then Shafat, the tight end, sneaks across the backside. Nice play call. They call it an old something screen. That's what they call it there. Whatever they call it, they call it a touchdown to Shafat, his 17th career touchdown. And for Huseman, that's his third total touchdown today. 75 total touchdowns in less than three complete seasons now. I asked his dad about oh, Fessel Shafat. Yes, Russ, your man, who you call Russ, and this is Mr. Mr. right here. Yeah. I said, why has Shafat come on so strong over the last three weeks? He's an All-American tight end, but was hampered by injuries at the beginning of the year. Then we were told he's healthy. And Coach Huseman said, well, he said he was healthy. In practice, he looked healthy. Then it came game time, and he, he clearly wasn't, to the point where they were doing things in their offense purposely to avoid getting him the football. That's how unhealthy he was. But now that Shafat's healthy, he is a matchup nightmare. He's the best tight end in the Southern Conference, maybe at the FCS level. That's high praise from you, sir. Well, it's true. But when you run that old something screen and you fool everybody, that's an easy catch. <laughs> so we'll see if Furman can make anything out of this. Nick Miller, as the Paladins have done all day, are going to run into a wall of mocks on kick return. So they'll have 25 seconds here. And all three timeouts. When you talk about just a really good football team and balanced offensively, defensively, special teams, and you look across the Southern Conference, we've seen all the teams. There's no doubt about it why they're undefeated, why they're going into the playoffs, why they probably maybe potentially could get a bye if things continue to go the way they're going today. They're just really good and they're well coached. And uh, just they're really a, a pleasant and a joy to, to really watch him play. Yeah, and on defense, too. Nikivi and Leslie, as the Mocs have done the last three drives for the Paladins, there are some hard hits out there for this defense. And that one signaled the end of the first half. Paladins hung with them early. They matched the opening touchdown drive for the Mox with a touchdown drive of their own. But after it was 7-all, the Chattanooga Mox took over. A couple of touchdown runs for Jacob Huseman. Another touchdown pass for the likely offensive player of the year in the Southern Conference. And it all adds up to a 24-7 halftime lead as the Mox try and finish off an unblemished Southern Conference record. 46-yard run for Blaze Jowski on the opening drive. Made it look good early for the Paladins. When we come back, Nick Schaefer joins us from the ASN Studios. You're watching the American Sports Network. Hi, I'm Rob Lowe, and I have DirecTV. And I'm far less attractive, Rob Lowe, and I have cable. With DirecTV, you get 1080p and Dolby 5.1, the industry's best picture and sound. With cable, you get pictures and some sound, too. DirecTV is a theater quality experience I can have at home with all my friends. Uh, I don't. Don't be like this, me. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Football Hall of Fame and Chick-fil-A fan experience puts you closer to the game than ever before. Featuring over 30,000 square feet of interactive exhibits that make it feel like game day every day. Get your tickets now at cfbhall.com. 
Geico's been helping people save money for over 75 years. They've really stood the test of time, much like these majestic Rocky Mountains, which must be named after the rock. That would be Rocky the Flying Squirrel, Mr. Gecko, sir. Obviously. Ah, uh, come on, Bullwinkle. They're named after... Uh, First President George Rockington. That doesn't even make any sense, Mr. Uh, Winkle. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Before we begin our halftime show, the Paladin Regiment would like to take a moment to recognize the seniors in the band who are marching in their last halftime performance. They include Holman Alexander Sousaphon, Jared Best, Drumline, Jennifer Bilton, Clarinet, Peter Demery, Saxophone, Elizabeth Douglas, Clarinet, Abby Frankie, Flute, Tyler Goodman, Trombone, Evan Payne, clarinet. Doug Marble, front ensemble. Audrey Eldred, dance team. Renee Holt, mellophone. Haley Howard, front ensemble. Joey Ionetta, baritone. Alex Jenks, trombone. Sam Klein, front. Carol Langston, mellophone. Graham McBride, drum major. Stephen McManus, sousaphone. Dakota Quevedo, flute. Addison Rothrock, dance team. Final game of the season Jason for Rothrock, Furman, final Melbourne, game of the regular season for Chattanooga. Season There's your score at halftime in Greenville, South Carolina. Right now, FCS Bracketology, yes, that's a thing, has Chattanooga as a potential eight seed in the playoffs, meaning a bye in the first round. However, a nine seed means they're going to be playing in week one. Greetings and welcome to Halftime on the American Sports Network. I'm Mick Schaefer. Coming up at the break, we'll look ahead to the final week of football and to basketball season as well here on ASN. A Furman tradition in the spotlight as well. After this one, we've still got another game for you tonight at 7 o'clock. It's FAU at Middle Tennessee. At 5-5, five and five, the Blue Raiders have two more chances to become bowl eligible after failing to do so the last two weekends against BYU and FIU. Ford Atlantic is coming off a bye, looking to snap a three-game losing skid next week on ASN. A trio of games, all from Conference USA. We'll continue with the Owls, this time at home, hosting Old Dominion. It's been an up-and-down season for the Monarchs in year one of Conference USA play. UAB goes to Southern Miss. UAB came into the weekend looking to become bowl eligible. Blazers have only been to one bowl game in program history. That was 2004. Remember, though, this game was Southern Miss's only win of the season last year. And Middle Tennessee travels to UTEP. Miners already earned that magical sixth win against North Texas last week. UTEP's most recent bowl was 2010, but they haven't won a bowl game since 1967. More super fun facts like that when we return. A redhead <gasps> staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. They know 
the trails. They know the plays. They know our traditions. They know what it takes, how much it will hurt. They live to run out of the tunnel. They live to make you proud. We all live for Saturday. We know who we are. We are Southern Conference football. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. For the past 33 years, every fall before the start of basketball season, and once again before the start of SOCON basketball tournament play, a group of Furman supporters come together to feed the Paladins basketball team. The group is known as the Peppers, and here's their story. some freshmen to sit at the table with me. It looked like they were very afraid and insecure. And I said, you're looking at helpful, blooded people. Everyone here loves you, whether you know it or not. And I, my second year, he was just open and spoken, well-spoken. We got indoctrinated very quickly with, uh, with, with Furman, all the athletics and other programs. It's more of a joy to us giving this thing meeting all of the young men that are coming in and some of them you know you have a lifetime with them because a lot of them will talk to you after they've graduated you'll hear from them and just to see the quality of kids that you have doing this is a great thing we'll go start with shock and then we work our way down to the uh, to the freshman all right all right all right all right Crowd, a great meal and I always love the opportunity to have our kids get up to talk a little bit to interact with some of these fans and I think that's great for them it's a great growing process and I want them to know the people personally who support them the most I think that's important <laughs> Thanks to Furman and Diamond F Films for that piece. We're transitioning to basketball here on the American Sports Network and we'll be in the SOCON very soon, December 3rd in fact, when Western Carolina travels to East Tennessee State. The Bucks pick third in the 10-team Southern Conference in hoops this preseason. Chattanooga projected second, actually got a couple first place votes, but basketball season for now can wait because the mocks and the Paladins need to finish things up here on the gridiron. Back out now to Greenville after this.
get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. So don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me trees. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Final game of the regular season from the mountains of the upstate here in Greenville, South Carolina. The Mocs have 17 unanswered points for a 17-point lead. Welcome back, Darren Goldwater and Corey Miller. Chattanooga came into this game with a purpose, even though they had clinched the automatic bid in the Southern Conference really two weeks ago. The idea today was let's get some momentum going into the playoffs, let's maybe get a bye, and really it's been as good as they could have hoped for. Well, Darren, they went down the first series and scored some points, but Furman played hard. I mean, they were fighting, battling, but they picked it up. The Mox did in the second half, second quarter, excuse me, and played very well. Jacob Houston, Mr. Houston, has been phenomenal today. There's been a lot of talk about Jacob Houston the last couple of years, and we're just going to keep talking about him, I would imagine, for an entire other season. Yeah. But first, right here, you got things going for the Chattanooga Mox. He's the one that capped off their first drive with his first rushing touchdown of the day. Well, I believe this is a fourth down play because we knew he was going to get the ball. Everybody knew. Grandmother knew it, but they couldn't stop him from getting in the end zone. Good play. Lejowski came right back, even the score at seven, and then the Mox took over. Yeah, again, Jacob Houston is the guy in zone read on the outside. Matt Morris got a little nosy on that play. Touchdown, Mox. Yeah, then the field goal from Ribeiro. It is a highlight. He's 15 out of 17 now on the year. And then it's, oh, no, screen right here to your guy. Everybody goes to the play side. The tight end sticks across backside. Touchdown. Great play, play call. Excuse me. 17th touchdown reception of the career of Shavat. He's tied for fourth in Chattanooga history. Pretty dominating stats. It felt as though maybe because of the first quarter that the Paladins were a little bit more even statistically with the Mox, but it's been domination from top to bottom. Well, they haven't stopped them. I mean, a great balance on the offense. They run it, they pass it. You got Houston, you got the receivers. They really spread the ball around. It's a really good offense. I've, the best offense I've seen in Southern Conference football. There's no question this is the best team in the league. They're unbeaten in the league. Chattanooga has never been unbeaten in Southern Conference play. They're 30 minutes away from pulling off that feat. 
They're also 30 minutes away from a nine-win season for the third time as a Division I team. And if the ninth-ranked team in the country, Chattanooga, can pull that off, it's possible they'll be a seed and have a first round bye in the FCF's playoffs. Jacob Husman, the Chattanooga Mox, looking for a perfect Southern Conference season with a 17 point lead as we get set for the second half. You got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in the smallest your moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy, and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. Which planet are we living on? Earth. Earth. Right here. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Dancing, smiles, for good reason, Jacob Huseman has over 250 total yards in the first half and three touchdowns scored. Started with this, fourth and goal. He's in the end zone for his first touchdown today. Again, a zone read right up the gut. Mr. Huseman again, nice run, making a good decision. Guess what? Zone read again on the outside. Mr. McMorris, you can't get nosy because this guy will hurt you. And then right here, great pocket presence and gets on the outside. Shows a little bit of speed. And then right here, sprint roll out. Oh, no, screen. Shy at the tight end. And yes, welcome to the party, young man. It's been all about the mocks here in the first half. These guys are getting it done. And that guy right there is very special. Mr. Two, Houston. 263 total yards in the first half. Now very close to 8,000 total yards in his career. Still with an entire year left to play. Believe it or not, he has no shot at the Southern Conference record of total yards. He is only about halfway to Armani Edwards' record of more than 14,000 total yards. Yeah, that's a, a lot of yards. That's a ton of yards. <laughs> of course, he was in the heyday of Appalachian State. All right, here we go. Second half, and it starts with a bang for the Furman Paladins. The bang named Richard Hayes. 
Out to the 41, best starting field position of the day for Furman. Richard Hayes had an opportunity right there to take that thing to the his house. But you got to pick your feet up, young man. Great touchdown, saving tackle. But look at the wedge right here. Good blocking, good seal blocks right there. And this almost gets away, but great field position for the Pallets to start the game. To start the second half, excuse me. 41 yard return for Hayes. Longest of the season for him. Blaze Jowski hit his first couple of passes, then he got in some trouble, and he stays in trouble to start this half. Danny Ring, Davis Tull, Zach Rail, three of the four linemen who collapse on him. Good pressure there, Davis Tull's guy. We didn't call his name a whole lot today because they've been double teaming him, but good pressure up there in the face of Blaze Jowski trying to get the ball out in a quick three-step drop, but Chattanooga was not having that. Second and ten. Plenty on the line for the Mox. The Paladins stand in their way. The winningest program in Southern Conference history. This is Hank McLeod. McLeod bursts through. D. Virgin was able to grab a hand to that waistline. About 20 yards on the run. Really good read, though, by Blaze Jowski right here. But good blocking because for these zone replays, to work, you gotta have good blocking. You seal that inside line back off right there and off to the races, he go. So Furman, out the gates the second half, trying to make a statement that, hey, we're not going anywhere. We're gonna fight you to the end. Nice day on the ground so far for the Paladins. You couldn't run it at all last week. Freeman forces Blaze Jowski out, he's almost picked. D. Virgin with a great jump. They were setting up Stellix right here on the stutter and go. Where he comes out and he stuttered, try to get that corner to, to bite on the stutter and go. But he wasn't having that. And look at the break on the ball right there. If you throw that ball on the inside of any of those comeback routes, you have a chance to have it pick. Virgin with a nice breakup on the play right there. I love it when these young men get hyped. Have, have Got to have fun playing this game. Got to have a lot of fun. Danny Ring is saying Furman brought him across. Prior to snap, ball, 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 ball. And they did. 69, 69. offense, offense. five-yard five penalty. penalty, still, still. second down. Well, that's Terrell Bush, and it has been a tough day for the true freshman tackle out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He's been forced into action because of injuries on that line, and he has been matched up with Davis Tull most of the day, so you can't blame him for being a little anxious. Yeah, but he's been getting a lot of help. And that's what you got to do, and you got a great pass rush. Davis Tall, 10 and a half sacks coming into this ball game. They get it out of there quickly. It was deflected at the line by Keontae Davis. It'll be third and 15. You don't like to be in this uh, scenario if you're firm and third and long when you got a pass rushing uh, unit like Chattanooga has. You guys have the ability to get after the quarterback and just bring immense pressure. You don't like being in third and 15. Now that they know that it's passed, they're going to pin their ears back and get ready to come across that line of scrimmage. Furman needs to get down to the 25. Blaze Jowski, Snelling, batted around, and it falls incomplete. Mahasabi will kill the last one to have a chance at it. That ball sailed on Blaze Jowski a little bit. And of course, uh, they got the hand, the big claw on it as well. You can see here, Snelling. This is a nice little slant route. And just throws it a little bit high right there. They can't bring it down. And of course, Chattanooga had an opportunity to intercept the football and could not get in. So it brings up a fourth down for Furman. But again, you have a nice drive going, and now it stalls on you. But now you got to play the field position game. Hollingsworth with a high one. This is perfect. Hangs it up there. Chattanooga's going to start at the 11 after the fair catch from Hudson. Fair catch called by Tommy Hudson. First down, Chattanooga. Blaze Jowski was able line. to maneuver the Paladins to pick up a first down. That's all they'll get. See if the Mox can put the nail in the coffin here. 24-7 early in the half.
you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little. But things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching. So it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. A redhead <gasps> staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Four weeks ago, the Mox had a large lead on the Mercer Bears. Early in the third quarter, Russ Huseman was not happy. Chattanooga let them back into the game. It became a seven-point game. In the biggest scare of the year for Chattanooga in league play. They were able to hold them off. They haven't lost in Southern Conference play. And coach told us this week, I let them know about it at the half. I let them know about it the next day. And it's been a different team since. Keon Williams, a one-yard gain. Marcus McMorris, the first to hit him. That is now nine stops for the redshirt senior. Well, we're, we're at that game, and they were struggling a little bit in the second half, but this is a team that's got a lot of maturity on it. They understand what's at hand, and, and of course, uh, nice tackle, nice play by the Furman defense right there. But this is a team, Darren, that I think they get it. You know what I mean? That, that Mercy game probably was a wake-up call, as you just mentioned. But they get it. If they're going to make some noise in the playoffs, it's all about momentum and building up some steam heading into the playoffs, and they want to finish this game strong today. Right now, they're part of the national conversation. Win this game, you can stay there. Huseman on the play fake. Found the seam, and Trey Robinson hits him right at the yard to gain. It's a nine-yard run, a first down. Jacob Huseman on the carry. Tackle made by yeah, that's the best thing for Chattanooga right now. They're already into the playoffs for the first time in 30 years. They did that securing the bid two weeks ago. But this is a team that was around the bottom of the Southern Conference for years until Russ Huseman took over. They had one win the year before he took over. Slowly he's turned this thing around. He's getting freshmen in, developing freshmen, and then mixing in a few transfers. Powerful run from Keon Williams. That'll get about five. Yeah, Williams on the run. But they have a nice, comfortable lead, and you don't need to get too crazy with the play call. You want to run Houston, run Williams, run Crane, and try to control the line of scrimmage to eat up the clock. And one of the bigger things, too, that I failed to mention earlier is that you want to try to get out of here healthy. And, and so once you build a comfortable lead, you try to just kind of, kind of tone back the play call and just try to get out of this game. A nice win, but a nice healthy win, I should say. Williams again. Keeps those legs churning and then falls forward. Should be good enough for another first down. You mentioned health. Yeah, yeah, Williams. Williams on the this carry. is actually a pretty healthy team. The line has been together basically all year long for, Fer uh, Chattanooga. for Chattanooga. The opposite is true for Furman. There probably isn't a more banged up team nationally at the FCS level. But their running backs have been healthy. When one has been banged up, the other's been healthy. And Coach Houston said, look, the bye won't be good for us to get healthy. We don't need it for that. We just need some confidence and keep momentum. Williams bounces to the outside, skips free of T.J. Warren, runs for 11 more. 
Nice run by Williams. Yeah, Williams on the run. Making the guy miss, getting the balls on the out, the ball on the outside of the uh, defense, and making something out of nothing. Keon Williams with over 2,200 career yards. Another senior out of Chattanooga. 58 yards on the day. It's Derek Crane who spells him. Back to the ground with Crane, who's flipped over. And this is what Chattanooga can do. We saw the two-minute offense at the end of the half. They went almost 80 yards in right. minute 40. And now they also have the ability to chew up clock. Middle of the season, they had a nine-minute game-killing, game-winning drive down at the Citadel. Well, with the two backs, Williams and Crane, of course, we've seen these guys kind of just wear folks down in the second half. Nice physical offensive line, two powerful downhill, north-south running backs. Of course, you throw Heisman in that mix. It's tough to defend. Here's Crane, tough to bring down. That is the fourth first down of this drive. And Crane, to yeah, me, Crane is that closer. He's, <laughs> he's that guy that comes in at the end of the game and just shuts you down because he's against the center. Knee situation, kind of banged up. Look at he just runs hard. He's tough to bring down, low center of gravity. And now you throw in Williams. I mean, that's a tough, tough, tough combination to stop. Crane isn't 100% healthy today either. The well, last time we saw him, he wasn't healthy. Yeah, yeah. Somebody hasn't been healthy all year long. He still goes for 100 against the Citadel that day. From the 46, they're going to throw it. Or will they? Houston gets away from Ross. Then Warren, another first down on the ground. 13 more for Jacob Houston. I mean, this reminds me of the old football game we used to play back in Paceland. South Carolina, tackle the man with the football. Just give it to him and run all over the place. And that's what Jacob Heisman has done all day. He breaks down the defense. No pass rush by the Furman defense. You give him time, and then you have nobody on the outside. Keep it contained, and he just hurts you. I mean, it's deflating as a defense when you see a guy like that uh, just run all over you. 14 carries, 103 yards for Mr. Heisman. Mr. Heisman. Eight. Career 100-yard day. It looks like Furman's wearing down. They're never bringing a ball carrier down on this drive on the first hit. Williams gets two eventually. And I think this is where you miss Corey Magwood. Now you're talking about injuries. Corey Magwood out of the game, one of the better players in the Southern Conference, the lead, lead tackle in the SoCon. And he's not playing today. Now you got another guy that's down for Furman. Just the injury bug is just really bitten them. Something crazy. And uh, it was good news that he's up and walking off the field. But Number two, Trey Robinson shaking up on the play. It's Trey Robinson, you didn't see it being helped yeah. off here. He's missed some time this year yeah. because of mono. He's also been injured. Just a tough year for him. Coach Fowler and his Furman team. But I give them credit because they're not quitting. They're playing hard. And they really have nothing to play for today except senior day in pride. Of course, their families that are here in the stands. And, you know, they've played hard. Keon Williams with a late handoff. Directs Vessel Shafat into the end zone. A record-tying touchdown run for Keon Williams. 28th of his career. Speaking of wearing down, that's, this is one of those defining drives, if you will. We're going to come, we're going to smash, we're going to run it, run it, run it. We're going to pound on you. We're going to out-physical you and win this football game. As you said, they can do it through the year. They can do it on the ground. And we see them be a second-half running team like this particular driver. And uh, very good, very, very good football team. A record that has stood for 68 years at Chattanooga. 28 career rushing touchdowns has now been tied by the senior from Red Bank High School in Chattanooga. Williams, first rushing touchdown of the day, balloons the lead out to 24. Chattanooga on its way to a possible first round bye in the playoffs. Coke Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. 
Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. Four hundred six yards of total offense now for the Mox. Two hundred twenty-two of them on the ground. Coming up later today, check your local listings live on ASN. The Owls in search of their third Conference USA win, trying to prevent Middle Tennessee from getting bowl eligible. One more win for the Blue Raiders, and they're going bowling. Seven o'clock tonight, live on ASN. Night just about falling on Paladin Stadium, the toughest venue of all the Southern Conference venues for the road team to win. But you wouldn't know it by today's game. Chattanooga has 24 unanswered, the latest, the 28th career rushing touchdown for Keon Williams, who's over 90 yards now on the day. And how about this, Corey? The man he tied, Gene Roberts, of the 28 Gene Roberts had, 18 of them came in one season back in 1946. Keon's got 12 of them now this year. Wow, impressive. Means you've done your homework. Bruce Fowler just hasn't had an answer for the deepest and most talented team in the league today. DJ Blaze Jowski getting chased by Davis Tull, avoids him and throws it away. Well, now Furman's behind 31 to seven, forced to be in a passing game, and that spells bad news for Bruce Fowler and his team because now you got guys like Davis Tull that's gonna get in that three-point stance and come off the ball and chase it. Blaze Jowski just like he did right there, creating havoc in the backfield. And that's a pass rusher, a former pass rusher. Frustrating when you get so close and you just can't get the guy on the ground. Normally, Tull will get the guy on the ground. Isaac Garcia, the freshman back with a five yard run here on second down. Tull's been quiet today. Furman has either doubled him or gone away from him a lot, sometimes opted around him. Right. And five on the play. Down. Well, you can't let a guy like that just destroy your whole entire offensive game plan. So, if you don't have a tackle that can match up with them on the outside, you have to keep a tight end in, you got to chip him with the back, you got to do certain things to slow him down. And I think Furman has done a really good job of really kind of keeping him at bay. Oh, nice little play here for Blaze Jowski. D. Virgin will string him down. 16 more for the freshman who ran for a career best 46 yards on the opening drive. And this is what you do when you've got guys that get up the field. You see 
tall in those two ends. Look, they're all the way up the field. Now you just run a quarterback draw play, and you get a first down. And that's just taking advantage of aggressive defensive end play. Smart play calling by Furman. They'll move the pocket now for Blaze Jowski. Here comes Tull, who hits him, but not before a first down to Andre Suttles. Nice patience by Blaze Jowski. Now, one of the things you don't want to do is try to block him with a tight end. But he does a nice job of getting an outside. A little bit of a hole right there. Could have been a rough of the passer. But again, I understand because you, you want to hit that quarterback so bad and you work it tirelessly to try to get a sack or get him on the ground. But just a little bit late. Former quarterback turned tight end, Fletcher, the motion man. Instead, it'll be the freshman Garcia spinning off the first hit. Tull catches up. 15 yards for Isaac Garcia. Now I want you to watch something that every young kid should watch. Davis Tull is blocked right here at the point of contact. Look, but he doesn't give up on the play, continues to chase, continues to hustle, and he gets in on the tackle. I mean, I like that. He's out of the play. Nice run by Garcia, but you got a guy like Davis Tall that has a great motor and he never gives up. And that's why he makes plays. That's why this young man, a former walk-on, is going to have a chance to play football at the next level. Plays Jowski, got Snelling still on his feet. Snelling's down to the five. 23 yards to the redshirt junior out of Atlanta. Nice route, nice throw, nice way to be patient. Stand up tall in the pocket. Blaze Jowski delivers a strike. The Snellers watch his play action pass. Good protection. Again, Davis Tall hits him as the ball is delivered, but he puts, it ball, puts the ball exactly where he needs to put it. Nice throw, nice catch, and a first down for Furman. Coming off a 100-yard day last week against Wofford. Snellings with his first big play today. Hank McLeod, touchdown Paladins. Well, this Bruce Fowler coach football team has pride. When you look at the wall up here, you see championships. You go down in the locker room, which I had the privilege to do today, you see championship signs. That means pride, that means high character, that means effort. And right there, a nice drive by this offense to take the ball down the field to finish it off with a touchdown by McLeod. And you got to feel good. I'm excited about Bruce Fowler and his Furman team, what they're doing, and the pride that they're showing in this ball game today. They'll go for two here. And not just feel good for Bruce Fowler. How about Hank McLeod? It's been an up and down final year for him, but a touchdown in the final game he'll play. Regardless of the outcome, he'll remember that. With the band still playing. Blaze Jowski pumps and he's down. Mahasabi Wakil chases the play down and the Paladins will stick on 13. But their best drive since the opening drive for the Paladins ends in a Hank McLeod touchdown. Hi, I'm Rob Lowe and I have DirecTV. And I'm super creepy Rob Lowe and I have cable. With DirecTV, you get 99% signal reliability. Now that's reliable. My cable's out, so I'm down at the rec center watching folks swim. I love that I can watch my shows and be worry-free. And I love the smell of other people's hair. Don't be like this me. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. You're watching the American Sports Network.
fifth-year senior out of Tampa Catholic High School in the Tampa area, obviously. 47 yards on the day. He'll finish his career with just about 2,400 rushing yards. He's been banged up all year. He's missed some time. Corey Magwood missing his first game this year, but it's a big one to miss. Leading tackler in the league, sixth in the FCS level. Isn't around to face the best offense in the league, Chattanooga. From the five, Bagley gets an 18-yard return. I feel bad for Corey Magwood, who had another exceptional year. When you talk about Furman and the injuries and the disappointments and letdowns, and he doesn't finish the season in a ball game like you, you want to play the best. Even though Furman can't go any further, this is going to be the end of the season for them. But as a player, you want to be in a game like this, going against Mr. Houston and this offense and showing them, hey, I'm pretty good. I'm a pretty good player as well. Of course, they probably know that Corey Magwood is a good player. But if you turn the tape on, you're going to see that this guy can ball out. Chattanooga had too many men on the field, I believe. Prior to the for illegal substitution, timeout, Chattanooga. Chattanooga. That's their That's first their timeout, timeout of the second, of the second half. half. So Russ Houston bailed him out. Very seldomly used Malcolm Colvin was the one who was seemingly incorrectly out there. He was the one trying to get off the field. I want to go back to what I said a couple of minutes ago about finishing teams off in the Mercer game. He said it starts with his defense, playing with energy and enthusiasm. When they should have put Mercer away, Mercer went down, scored. Got a pick, scored again. Instantly made it a seven-point game when it was 21. And here, while the Mox got a stop and a touchdown, the first two possessions in order in this half, they just gave up a long drive. And Russ Huseman doesn't look particularly happy. You know in the back of his mind is, guys, finish this. Right. We've been talking about it. Finish this. Well, I mean, you're up 31-13. <laughs> they came out and, and went down and scored here in the second half. But Furman's not going to quit. No, they will not. Behind the line of scrimmage. Byron Johnson, one of those guys playing for Magwood. Second straight stop, uh, start for the sophomore makes the play. All right, around the league, the Citadel will keep the Silver Shaco in the military classic of the South, the battle with VMI. Look down there, though. Alabama has extended what was a 24-14, actually 17-14 halftime lead. Yeah. And, of course, Amari Cooper went out of the game uh, with the knee. He was trying to get in the end zone, and the Western Carolina guy hit him on the knee, so I don't know the severity of his injury. Of course, I have uh, some reason to pay attention to that game, just saying. Do you have vested interests? Yes. Corey Miller's son, one of the most highly touted recruits in the country last year, a redshirting yeah, linebacker one the down in Alabama. And three on the play brings up third First down. Down. That's right, Chris. Four, seven, seven, two, with nine yards to go. But how about Western, though? The Alabama hasn't given up multiple touchdowns in the first half all year long in Western Carolina. And it was Troy Mitchell, two touchdown passes. In that ball game for, for Western Carolina against uh, top five defense in Alabama. Pretty impressive. Well, you know, the, we've seen Western be good offensively as well this year. Yeah, Western's a team to watch next year, no doubt. Big play for this Furman defense, third down and nine. They bring pressure at Houston, who dumps one off to Crane. And Crane's got the first down and plenty of running room. Crane tripped up at the last second. Likely a touchdown saving stop, even though it was around midfield. Crane shows up in the second half. He, he's a closer right here, just a nice screen play by the catch. Furman coming in on the inside blitz. Great blocking on the outside, and it's all about Crane. But a good touchdown saving tackle right there. But nice play call. They, they brought pressure up the inside. They run the screen on the outside. And as a result, they had the 45-yard line of Furman. Rodney Anderson saved the touchdown. He hasn't played in the last five games after starting the year, the first six games. Crane hit as he takes the handoff. There's no quitting Gary Wilkins playing in his 48th and final collegiate game. Well, that's, that's called being a lead on the defense and Gary not Wilkins giving up, not quitting. 
enjoying the moment as a senior. He's going to play every play as though it's going to be his last one. Comes in on the inside, stunt the tackle. Just whiff blocks, don't block him. And, of course, Wilkins make Green pay on that play. See those scars on the helmet? Darren, when you see those scars and marks, those are battle scars and marks. That means you've been laying some wood. You've been hitting some folk. You don't get those in Pop Warner. Just saying the flag football. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying you don't. Get those. <laughs> That's their <laughs> A little bit more physical at <laughs> this level, maybe. <laughs> Play clock is running down. That's why Chattanooga took that one. Well, look, Gary Wilkins has been a great player his whole career. Davis Tull has stolen the headlines from him. But he's second in the league in tackles for loss and sacks. He's among the best in Furman history. A very proud Furman tradition. Yes. And when you see a guy like this who may not get the national accolades. And being a senior, you know, what goes through your mind is my last game. You know, will I get a chance to, to extend my career? When you look at a guy like Wilkins, he's undersized at the defensive end. You know, can he stand up and play linebacker? But he, you got to enjoy football. I tell young people this all the time because when you go to college, I tell my son the same thing. The clock begins to tick. You have so many opportunities to play this game, so many chances to, to get it in, because 90% of you will never go any further than this. So I applaud these young guys for playing hard. Houston rolls one way, comes back to Tommy Hudson. Uncovered at the 15. Jamari Milliken throws him out at the 12. They 35 are, yards. They are doing everything known to man with the playbook. Here. They roll them out again. That old something screen, same format, but this time they throw it across the field to a receiver. I mean, this is one, normally this is a dangerous throw. You never throw the ball across your body. That's the rule of thumb. But right here, Furman gets confused again. Get, they get tricked again. And a nice play call by the Mocs. What a day for Houston. Set it basically all year. He's 16 out of 20 now. More Derek Crane time. It'll be second down and three. They can get a first down at the two without finding the end zone. Crane battling a sore ankle sophomore who was an all freshman team member in the Southern Conference last year. Coach Houston said, listen, how big is this game for us even though the title already wrapped up? Derek Crane will play, and will play a lot, even though he's not 100%. Well, I can't tell the way he's playing. He looks pretty healthy right now to me. Keon Williams spells him, runs away from Johnson, and into Wilkins. I like Wilkins. He's very active. He plays on the other side of the line of scoop. Look at this. He holds on and keeps contained. They keep the outside arm free. That's what you're supposed to do when you have contained. You keep that outside arm free, fight something, the offensive block, come up and make the play. He's had a heck of a game. Heck of a game for him today. He's got a good teacher. His dad, Gary, played in the NFL for six years with Buffalo and Atlanta. On the other side of the ball, he was a fullback. Always helps when you got a dad that played in the league and you can teach your son. But most of the time, your son don't want to listen. <laughs> Here's Keon Williams. Oh, what a run for Williams. A new Chattanooga record, 29th career touchdown. That's all Keon Williams right there. Clogged up on the play side. He has the vision. To go back to the backside and the speed to outrun everybody on the Furman defense to the pylon there for the touchdown. And again, Chattanooga extending 94 83, 94 their lead. 83. It's been tough to stop this Chattanooga offense all year. In league play, they're averaging 470 yards and 41 points a game because of how balanced they are. Second touchdown of the day here for Williams again. New Chattanooga record, Corey, 29th rushing touchdown but of the you, year. You can see a very patient runner, 
and then he has the vision and the speed to bounce it out on the outside, and yes, celebrate. I said of the year, it's of his career, 29. Yeah. And he's tired, but uh, he has a reason to be tired because he's scoring touchdowns. Nice to run as a running back when your quarterback is oftentimes keyed upon in the ground game. And Jacob Houston has been featured in the ground game and through the air today. Houston has also rushed for a pair of touchdowns today. These are updated stats. 8,057 total yards for Houston, including this game today. And look at who he's chasing. Armani Edwards, who went on to the NFL. Scott Riddle, who had great targets at Elon. Richie Williams, who was a dual threat guy for Appalachian State. You know, he can very realistically climb to third. Yes. What I mean, another year, there's no doubt about it. The numbers that he's putting up, he's going to get to third. I think he'll pass Richie Williams. But those other two guys, he will be staring at for a long time because those are some big time numbers. It'll be a fun year if he can put up 6,000 total yards next year. Hey, you know, we got back-to-back -back weeks in college football where running backs rush for over 400 yards. <laughs> That's true. Anything's possible, right? That's right. Hayes had a 40-plus yard return to start the half. He's bottled up at the 17 here with less than a minute to go in the third. Alongside Corey Miller, a nine-year NFL veteran of Derek Goldwater. Furman trying to win its second straight after a eight-game losing streak, which is forlorn territory around these parts. Right. It was because of injuries, but Bruce Fowler has done his best to keep this team motivated and moving forward. And if they can win their second straight, they would likely derail the hopes of the Mox for a first-round bye in the FCS playoffs. That looks pretty good right about now. Suttles with a spinning catch. Middle gain of about four. Well, the problem is, Darren, I see a lot of guys down on that sideline in purple sweatsuits. <laughs> and when you see a lot of, when you have as many purple sweatsuits, I hope we can get a picture of that. And you look at all those sweatsuits down there. Look at that. Those are the red shirt guys and hurt guys. And when you got that many guys on that side of the ball that you have dressed, that means you got problems. And that just tells the story of this Furman football season. Danny Ring on the stop, couple yard run. And you know, at the FBS level, anytime you have injuries to numerous starting players on both sides of the ball, it's a big story. When you're talking about 63 scholarships, it becomes a much bigger story. And it is unfortunately the story of the year for the Paladins, who have one quarter left in this 2014 season. It'll be their ball looking at third and three with 15 minutes to play here from Paladin Stadium. The Mox that close to their first ever perfect Southern Conference season and a nine win year overall. We shall achieve. At the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, we are guided by a philosophy passed down over generations. We shall achieve a bold commitment that tells the world what to expect from our campus. Faculty scholars on the cutting edge of new knowledge, students winning in the classroom and on the playing fields, and alumni at the top of their careers. At UT Chattanooga, we achieve and so will you. Cheer for the stumbles. That he should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born.
One quarter left in regular season action. Darren Goldwater, Corey Miller, Paladin Stadium in Greenville, South Carolina. Preseason pick to win the league. The Mocs preseason number two, the Paladins. Right now a 25 point difference. Logan McCarter tries to scoop that one up. Yeah, they'll give him the catch and the first down, a five yard pickup. Blake Jowski has a nice arm. And we compared him and Jacob Houston. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Houston. The one thing I like more about Blake Jowski than Houston is the arm. And I think he has better arm strength, better zip on the football. 6A All State in the state of Florida last year as a senior. Under pressure now, out of the reach of Snellings. Blake Jowski pass intended for George Snellings, incomplete. Second now. He really has a nice arm, and last week when we saw him, he was, oh, splendid, spectacular. What other S word I can come up with? Sharp. Perfect. Sensational. That's an S word. Yeah, but I liked perfect. He was 15 out of 15. He was perfect. Okay. Super. Stunning. It's second down. Design run for Blaze Jowski. Nikivi and Leslie credited with that stop a yard and a half. Blaise Blaise Jowski Jowski on the run. I think if they had their way, Blaze Jowski would have been redshirted this year. Remember, Reese Hannon yeah. was the starter, went down yeah, in week one. The then it was yeah. Dylan Woodruff, who just couldn't move the offense. So in the Western Carolina game, Blaze Jowski came in. That's seven games ago now. Came in late in the game. The game was decided at that point. With a lot of confidence. And from that point on, he's been the starter, shown some flashes, and has matured as the year has gone along. Swings one out to Magwood. He's stopped behind the line. So the Chattanooga defense doing exactly what Coach Houston will have wanted here, trying to put this game away yeah, early on in the fourth quarter. Out. A defense that is top 15 at the FCS level in points, total yards, passing defense. They have been all that and then some against this Paladin offense. Well, Too long. I'm sorry. When you go into the, I'm thinking ahead, the playoffs in this Chattanooga team, we talk about the completeness of this football team, special teams, offense, defense. They have it all. I mean, they really do. And, and you know this as well as I do. If you're going to win championships, we can talk about Jacob Heisman, and we can talk about Williams all day long, but it's all about the defense. 58-yard punt, career long for John Croft Hollingsworth. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean.
So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. An offense that's put up 483 yards, has the ball back, up 38-13. If you're at the game or know someone that is, tell them to tweet a picture of this. Beautiful setting here in the mountains of Greenville, South Carolina. Maybe we'll retweet it. Use the hashtag live on ASN. Hit us up on the Twitter handle, at live on ASN. And you can do it for the remainder of this game and then into basketball season as well. Here's Ricardre Bagley, originally a firm and commit. Just a few touches today. He's got about a yard on first down. Well, if you're Chattanooga, you know what it's about. Mr. Clock, Mr. Tick, Tick, Tick right now. It's just trying to run it out. Again, get out of here healthy and head back to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Of course, where it's going right now, Darren, look like they're going to have that bye. And that bye means a lot because now you can go back and get more guys healthy, and kind of self-evaluate. And uh, been a really good, solid performance all around. I mean, Furman has battled, but unfortunately, they just don't have the bodies nor the talent right now to compete with this Chattanooga football team. Bagley, good contact there, right at the point of attack. Byron Johnson, the sophomore at Swansea High School. That's here in the state of South Carolina. And you gotta feel good for Chattanooga. Last year, if you would ask me, I would tell you it was the best team in the Southern Conference. But because of the tie-breaking scenario, they finished in a three-way tie and were left out of the playoff picture. So this year is their first trip to the playoffs in the last 30 years. Last trip was 1984. It was the purpose all year long. Look, we have one goal to win the title outright. They did it two weeks ago. On third down, Wilkins can't bring down Houston. Is that the first pass they've thrown all half? No, actually, the second pass they tried one early on but he ran with it, he kept the ball and ran with it. That's the second oh, attempted pass, I should say. Well, they had the one to Crane, too, remember, on third and long. Right. That was the, so the, yeah, the second attempt pass. to pass. And, and so, you know, but again, that's okay. It's just, like, we're just gonna try to get through this fourth quarter and, and, and get out of here. I mean, you got a nice pad as a lead right now, 25 point lead, so you're in good shape right, if you chat to do that. Rugby style kicker rips the line drive, Suttles able to fall back on it. Very lucky right there. That's one of those that you may have to get away from. But again, let the play. Furman got some work to do. But it's going to be over. Coke Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke.
A matchup of the only two coaches in the league that are coaching at their alma mater. Bruce Fowler on the right, Russ Schusman on the left. Both former defensive backs, both from the Cincinnati area. And about the same age, didn't know each other growing up. First got to know each other when Russ Schusman was part of the staff at William & Mary in Richmond, and he was going up against Furman teams with Bruce Fowler as an assistant. He said that's when you really start to know guys, and now they talk about places like Skyline Chile. They get tricky here. Logan McCarter for Andre Suttles. Yeah, he's got it down at the 21. <laughs> well, that point in the game where I said the first half, you have nothing to lose in this ball game if you're firm. So why not a little trickeration, a little reverse pass? And he's wide open. Actually, he had to wait on the ball. That should have been a touchdown had he thrown the ball a little earlier. He would have walked in the end zone. But let's take a look right here at the replay. Now Lincoln did a nice little reverse pass. Hangs it up, floats on him a little bit. But again, nice play call right on the, right the timeout. So, yes, nice job there by Furman. Just inside the red zone. 31 yards to Andre Suttles. Lucas Webb, Jerry Rice Award candidate. That goes to the top freshman at the FCS level. Able to walk off under his own power. That was a nice ball that was thrown by McCarter. I give it a B minus. That's it? Yes, because anytime you got the receiver has to stop and wait on the ball, it's not a, it's not a perfect throw. So it got there, he overshot the defenders, completed the pass there for B minus. B minus. You are harsh. That was a pretty tight spiral for a receiver. Davis Tull drapes on Blaze Jowski. Now McCarter's on the receiving end of a four-yard play. You go in the film room, and the coach is going to say, Logan had McCarter. you thrown that ball just a hair earlier, play, it's a touchdown. Out. So therefore, you have to take away a little few points from him. He's a nice throw by a receiver. He's warming his hands. Probably, okay, his hands were too. He was cold. He don't have those gloves on like you rocking up in, in the studio. So B, upgrading it to a B? No, B minus still, I'm just saying. Oh. I give him a little bit of uh, some leniency, I should say. Second down and eight. Blaze Jowski, Nakivi and Leslie forced him to throw it away. Blaze Jowski's pass intended for Isaac Garcia, incomplete. Third down. Blaze Jowski lucky to get sacked right here, Coach. That was a slow developing play. He's waiting on his receiver to get open. But you just got to get rid of that football, almost holding that just a hair too long. At one point, Furman won 15 straight games in this series. Chattanooga now, however, looking for its third straight and fourth out of the last five. And it looks like Blaze Jowski's hobbled a little bit. Quick drop, complete to Snellings. Nice grab. All the way down to the two. 20 yards. Now that's an eighth throw. That's an eighth plus. Throw. When you're talking about the tightness of spiral, when you're talking about zip, the ball down low where only the offensive player can get it. Nice, play. watch this right here. Fakes it right now, watch this. That's a great spin. Down and low, okay, it's a little bit wobbly, but still the ball gets there with some zip on it. Peyton Manning throws a wobbly ball too, but he gets still has some zip on it. Nice throw and catch. Good catch by Snellings for a first down. First and goal. Here's Hank McLeod, hit by Keontae Davis, but he still plows his way in. Second of the day for McLeod. That's all effort. That's just all desire and want to. That You know what? I know we're down. I know we probably can't come back and win this ball game, but I'm not going to quit. I'm going to enjoy my last football game. Nice touchdown, bro. I love kids and players, regardless of what level they're in that won't quit, won't give up. Tells a lot about a person. It's a fine final day in the career of Hank McLeod. Try and make this a 17 point game here. With the fade to McCarter that Lucas Webb plays perfectly. Now that wasn't an A plus throw. You got to put a little bit of air on that football and 
give him a chance to go up and play a little basketball, rebounding, a chance to catch it. But nonetheless, Furman uh, gets the score. Your boy, your boy, dang going water, Mr. McLeod, having himself a nice day, even though they find themselves behind. Don't worry, 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Former Chattanooga defensive back, graduated in 1983 and about to be three-time coach of the year. Russ Huseman comfortably moving towards an unbeaten Southern Conference season for the first time in school history. Coming up tonight, check your local listings live on ASN. The Blue Raiders trying to get bowl eligible and move to 5-2 and two in CUSA play in the process. That's a 7 o'clock kickoff in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, taking on Florida Atlantic live on ASN. Hank McLeod has had a couple of highlights this year. Part of a pretty strong career. Went for over 100 yards at South Carolina as well. And now Furman getting set for an onside kick. Corey, guess who's out there for Chattanooga on the hands team? Mr. Crane and Mr. Huseman. Yeah, Jacob Huseman. This is recovered by Furman, but... It is it go, not 10 it? yards. No, yeah. I think he got it at about the 33 or, thir or uh, 43 or 44. Did not go 10 yards. Air Force. Uh, the kicking team, team, team touched the ball in the 10-yard belt. Illegal touching on the kicking team. First and 10, Chattanooga at the spot of illegal touching. That was close. But I'm shocked to see Mr. Houston on the uh, onside team. With ten the good minutes hands to, team is what they call it. Well, yeah, with 10 minutes to go in the regular season finale with a playoff berth coming up. And knowing that these guys are like kamikazes, you're taught to go take guys out to try to get the ball. I wouldn't put my starting quarterback out there. Let me take that a step further. I don't know if I'm going to put my son out there <laughs> to get crushed by a kickoff team. <laughs> Here's Bagley, a couple yards for him. As a matter of fact, if I'm Russ Huseman, I'm probably looking at taking my son out the game right now because you got a comfortable lead. You're going to stand at about nine minutes to go in this football game. And I, I think, you know, you start looking at, I, I want to start pulling some guys because I don't want them to get hurt heading into the playoffs. Every coach has to make that decision. And I think you got probably – a certain time that you said, hey, I'm going to pull it, whether it's five-minute mark, six-minute mark, but I think this might be the last series that we see of Mr. Houston. 
see if he can put together a clock killing drive first. It's Bagley. Minter grabs him with one arm and strings him down. Recovery Bagley on the run. Two more for Bagley. That's a nice chase. Yeah. I mentioned the linebacker. Reaches out to grab him. He really just jerked him down at, with ease, but Bagley's not a big man. <laughs> By the stretch of any imagination, I mean, it just kind of dish ragged him a little bit there, Mr. Minter. You make plays like that to get the mister in front. Would you give Jameis Winston a mister? You mean Jameis Winston of Florida State? That's a high school teammate of Brad Minter. I give him an incomplete. Oh. Heisman's not enough. No. Huseman off his back foot and behind Tommy Hudson. And he's been slow to get it up right here because he took his shot. Eight, That's what I'm saying. You lead. might want to get him out the game because these guys, the Paladins, they're not going to quit. And you're going to throw the football with a 38 to 19 lead. You put you risking getting your star quarterback hurt heading into the playoffs, and he took a shot. And he's still feeling that. I hope he's going to the right side of the bench there. Probably looking at his dad like, Come on, Dad, really? <laughs> Just the second three and out for the Mox. Nick Pollard will angle one, and that's played perfectly. Beautiful. Downed at the one. Now, I've never seen it just a low spiral kick punt like that, but had a little backspin on it. And man, it's like me hitting my eight iron out about 138 yards. I put my eight iron out and I spin it back about four feet from the flag. So we've got eight minutes to go in the game. You wonder now about whether or not the mocks are going to leave the starters in. Russ Huseman earlier this week said, hey, we're playing it all the way through to the end. We'll see if that holds true. Well, after that last shot, Russ Huseman needs to uh, take Jacob Huseman and put him on the sidelines and say, put your hat on, get you a handful of sunflower seeds, and sit the carry. rest of this game out. Because if you yeah, saw that last shot that he down. took there, no, no. You got to have this guy. If they're going to make any noise in the playoffs, Jacob Houston has to be on the center or the shotgun. P.J. Blazjowski, who Russ Houston said reminds him of a young Jacob Houston, similar as a freshman, getting better as the year goes along, completes it out to Snellings to move the chains out to the 15. Confirming right now, I need to get in a little hurry up. You have to have a sense of urgency. Three scores, three possessions down. With about seven and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, but it looked like they're in no hurry, so. But I like that guy right there, Blake Jowski. I like his name. I like his makeup. I like how he has matured over the last six, seven weeks as a quarterback. Oh, this one is intercepted, though, by Keontae Davis. The defensive end is inside of the 10. And I don't like that interception. <laughs> Big fella's hurt. Well, Chattanooga came into this game pretty healthy. That's the second starter they've had banged up. Now, I want to tell you the problem with that right there. Oh, that took a shot on an anchor right there. Is you got to cut the defensive end. That's a three-step drop. And the goal of the tackles is to cut the defensive ends to get their hands down. You want to cut them so their hands are down. So that ball, because it's thrown low right over the top of that defensive end, but if you miss the cut block, that is going to be the result of the interception right there. And he took a shot on that ankle. And that looked pretty bad in the replay. Some will tell you that's the second best defensive lineman they've got behind Tull. Now they're rolling Huseman out. Touchdown, Shafat. Second of the day. Keep the pass complete. The fellow Shafat did a great hard to catch him. There's a guy that you said is the best tight end in this league and a guy that may have a chance to play at the next level. Of course, been quiet a lot this season, Shafat. But shows he has nice hands, nice soft hands. And, of course, right after the turnover, touchdown. And Mr. Houston adds to his stats as well. 
five total touchdowns for Jacob Huseman, three of them now through the air. Shafat was quiet this year because of a banged up shoulder early on. Now he's fully healthy and maybe with a strong end of the year, a good run in the playoffs, maybe the NFL increases its looks at him again. He's got the size and he's got the hands. 6'5", 250 pounder, who now has 18 career touchdowns. But this, this mistake is not right the defense. You see it, just a nice drag route. It is the defensive end. Got to get pressure on Eastman, not let him on the outside. And therefore you get, get the uh, defensive player time to play underneath that drag route. A nice bootleg play, nice touchdown by Shafat. On Number the receiving two. end of the 51st passing touchdown of Jacob Huseman's career, he's one off a UTC record. Hi, I'm Rob Lowe, and I have DirecTV. And I'm far less attractive, Rob Lowe, and I have cable. With DirecTV, you get 1080p and Dolby 5.1, the industry's best picture and sound. With cable, you get pictures and some sound, too. Direct TV is a theater quality experience I can have at home with all my friends. Uh, I don't. Don't be like this, me. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Two passing touchdowns, not three, two for Jacob Huseman, two on the ground. He's got a modest 360 total yards today, and it's 45-19. Darren Goldwater, Corey Miller, a very empty looking Paladin Stadium. It's gotten kind of cold. The score's gotten away from him in what's been a long season. I'm manning up, I don't have gloves on, I don't have a skull hat on or a scarf. I'm used to this football weapon. Pads are hitting down there. Furman will start from just shy of its own 30. You guys all bonded up in here like you. Just gloves. Ooh. That's it. Come on, man. We put you on that show. Come on, man. You could find much better things than me wearing gloves to put me on. Come on, man. I can assure you. Just call my <laughs> wife. She'll give you plenty of dirt. Yeah, I met your wife the night you heard me in concert. Oh, yeah. Corey Miller, not just an athlete, he can sing. And I'm serious. <laughs> Tanner Skogan dances his way for three. Chattanooga's defense rallies to him. Tanner, a lot of starters out there for Chattanooga's defense. Well, after that last uh, interception, I was thinking about pulling guys. Of course, Furman has another quarterback in the ball game as well, right? Davis Tull will head off just as you say that. Yeah, this is Dylan Woodruff. 
who was the first man up when Reese Hannon was injured earlier in the year. It's the first time Woodruff has played since P.J. Blazjowski took the starting spot from him in the Western Carolina game. Well, now you want to try to get some guys in, hasn't played much, and especially if you have some seniors on this team that haven't played, this is the right time to, if you're farming, to get them in the ball game and get some reps and have some film and footage that they can show their potential kids one day. Woodruff won't show that one to his kids. Redshirt freshman down by Freeman and Zach Rail. Quick three and out for the Paladin offense with about five minutes to play. Today's been all about Chattanooga. Scored on the opening drive of the game. Furman came right back with the answer. Then it was 24 unanswered for the Mox to put some separation between them and the Paladins that the Paladins could never really close into. The Mox who secured the outright championship of the Southern Conference automatic berth to the playoffs two weeks ago came into this one saying it's as important as every game need momentum and confidence to go into the playoffs. And if that can happen, a possible first round bye in the FCS playoffs. The selection will be announced tomorrow. Well, you see Jacob Huseman in the huddle right there. He's not coming back in the ball game. He's done, and of course, uh, rightfully so. We talked about that five-minute mark. It's 4:51 left in the ball game, and so his day is over. Fourth game of the year for Alejandro Benefield, redshirt freshman at a Lovejoy High School in Georgia, 50% passing on the year, and he's run for 86 yards. This will be Bagley, who he gives up. Oof, Gerald Wilkins right at the whistle, maybe a touch after it. Mr. Wilkins playing with a little attitude. One guy that, uh, knowing that uh, he's down to about four minutes of his college football career, yeah, he's going to get every ounce of it. And I enjoy watching a young man that plays that type of effort and attitude. Two-time captain with the Paladins three-time all-conference selection. He'll probably get more all-conference nods at the end of this year. Second in the league in tackles for loss and sacks. More Bagley. We've seen a lot of the freshmen here down the stretch. Or was that 21? It was. That was the senior Marquise Green instead. Marquise Green on the carry. Get a four. Bring up third down for Chattanooga with nine yards to go. Chattanooga will finish off a nine-win regular season. Fifth time in program history they've gotten to nine wins, but only the third as a Division I team. And they have never been undefeated in the Southern Conference, which is what they will do. And they'll head in winners of nine out of their last ten games. The only blemish on that record will be a loss to Tennessee. Ryan Ross brings down Benefield to bring up fourth down. About three Ryan minutes to play. Ryan Ross on the tackle. Gain of one. Fourth down. Furman is a team that you, know, you talked about preseason rankings and expectations. and Again, we've Nick talked all about the injuries and for this football team, but I tell you, they get guys back healthy, and with some of the players that had to grow up, was forced to grow up, to play early. I think this team will be right back in contention in the Southern Conference next year. Oh, subtle. See his pops. Looked like some helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact there from Nettles. Andre Suttles on the return. He's able to make something out of it with two and a half minutes to play. Yeah, but you got to wrap up. I mean, and, and these young guys, Try to make these sports center type moments. But don't wrap up. I mean, good pop there. You can see here he doesn't call the fair catch, but he just doesn't wrap up right there. And Suttles was able to get out that tackle and get three or four yards on the return. But 
Everybody wants a knockout hit. I get it. You know, you want to celebrate. And everybody back home wants to say, man, nice hit. And like this guy saying, hey, smiling, nice hit. But real that goes as a missed tackle. <laughs> so don't celebrate on missed tackles. Woodruff will throw. Dingus will catch. Uh, first down, 17 yards. Redshirt junior out of Nashville, possibly the last game he'll play as well. He does have a year of eligibility. Nice catch. First of the day for him. Chattanooga's gone pretty deep on its defensive front as well. Four yards there, we're inside of two minutes. When you look at the playoffs, as we talked about this a little early, kind of off camera, off air. You look at Coastal Carolina, New Hampshire, teams like that in the playoffs, who who you like to make some noise? And how do you see Chattanooga against teams like Coastal? You know, Chattanooga is pretty darn balanced, aren't they? It starts with the defense. Special teams are outstanding. They lead the league in turnover margin. And they've got a quarterback who has seen everything in the last three years now. And if, in fact, they get a high seed and a bye in the selection announced tomorrow, then they're going to have a home game. And, you know, I wouldn't bet against Jacob Huseman and a defense led by guys like Davis Tull and Mahasabi Wakil and Derek Lott. You start 360 total yards yeah. today, four more touchdowns. Well, just, uh, you know, kind of a work pale day for Jacob Huseman. Just does everything right. And, and the thing that really impresses me about him is that he really doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He had to fumble early on today, but that was about it. Woodruff taken down by Wright. To that point, only twice this year has Jacob Huseman thrown an interception yeah, against FCS play, competition. He did against yeah, Mercer. He did again last week against Tennessee Tech. But Chattanooga as a team just doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. They don't commit a whole lot of penalties. As Hank McLeod Get some hugs in his final collegiate game here. Tell you what, Hollingsworth has had a pretty nice day. Well, for seniors, I mean, you can see the guys there hugging up, and there they, they really will be some tears shed down on the sidelines. I mean, guys that, and you can see there, you can see tears, guys crying, and the emotions that are shared by these young men that, uh, put a lot of effort and heart in into this and you know leaving high school you go to college it's a great day you sign that letter of intent and, and it goes by fast it really does and, and you got to enjoy every moment there's nothing like going to camp and the summers and the workouts and the running and everything that you do as a team and the blood sweat and the tears and you go to a battle you come back and and then it all comes to an end and for a lot of these guys most of these young men that are seniors on this field. This will be the last time they'll ever put a uniform on again to play college football. So much love, much respect, because I understand the discipline and the hard work and the effort that it takes to become a college football player. There is still more football in the future of the seniors for Russ Huseman and the Chattanooga Mox. The goal wasn't necessarily a perfect Southern Conference season, but that's what they've accomplished for the first time in program history. Running through the league, they improved to 9-3, and 7-0 and in Southern Conference play as the two Cincinnati natives, Bruce Fowler and Russ Huseman, exchange a handoff uh, and shake. Jacob Huseman has guided his father's alma mater back into the playoffs for the first time since 1984. They will go in at least as high as number nine in the country, probably with a first-round bye. And with the defense anchored by a potential Buchanan Award winner, Davis Tull, this is going to be a formidable team to knock out of the FCS playoffs. Plenty more from Paladin Stadium. Stay with us live on ASN.
This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Get your f***ing You're not f***ed in here. Yes, I am. No, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Which planet are we living on? Right here. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Convincing win for Chattanooga to end the regular season. 45-19, the final score at Paladin Stadium, finishing off a perfect Southern Conference slate. Darren Goldwater and Corey Miller. Coach Schusman told us earlier this week that the goal was never to go undefeated in Southern Conference play, but let's bring Coach Schusman in because that's exactly what you've done. More importantly, you'll carry that momentum into the playoffs, whether or not you have a bye. What impressed you most about the effort today? Well, I thought both sides of the ball, uh, you know, we had some lapses defensively uh, that we got to get cleaned up. But offensively, I thought we were very efficient. We made plays. Uh, our wideouts blocked well. We ran hard. You know, we had the one turnover. But uh, for the most part, we executed really well on offense. And I'm just proud of our football team. Coach, when you look at your defense, and of course, I'm a defensive guy. Defense wins championships. Talk about your defense and how they've been this game basically all year long. Well, we've played really well on defense all year, and uh, today I'm not real sure if we did that, um, but not bad. I mean, Furman did some really nice things. Their quarterback's really good. He, he's, you know, he was tough to handle, and they got some good wideouts. I, I wasn't overly thrilled with them, but we did enough on defense to win the game. Coach, last year you came so close and were left out despite being in a three-way tie for the Southern Conference Championship. So this year you had some experience, you had that to build on as you work towards a playoff bid. Now there's some new territory as you lead the team into the playoffs. So what's the message as you get ready to play in these playoffs? Well, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll figure that out tomorrow, I think. We gotta figure, we gotta find out when we play. You know, hopefully we get a bye. Uh, I think we got one of the eight best teams in the country. Our, our resume is really, really good. Um, so we'll see, hopefully we get a bye, we get a week to rest. Uh, and then get a home game second week. I, I don't know how it's going to unfold, but uh, I, I can't believe that, that they would keep us from a top eight seed, but you never know. Coach, I refer to your son as Mr. Huseman, the way he plays running and throwing the football. Jacob has been phenomenal for you. And, and, of course, going into the playoffs, you talk about balance. How much are you going to use him running the football as opposed to passing the football? Well, we, we got to do both. I mean, he, he's that kind of player. You know, he can run it, he can throw it. Uh, I thought he threw the ball great today. You know, he hit some, some big ones on him. Uh, he, he runs the ball great. Uh, he's a fantastic player. We're so happy to have him. I'll tell you what, I came out here and, and uh, about four years ago, we played Furman here and Jacob was a senior in high school and he came to the game. It was middle of the year and he made a verbal commitment to Chattanooga and uh, Probably the best, uh, happiest I've ever been as a football coach, man. Uh, you know, he went, he went up, up there and told us he was committing to us, and uh, what a great get. Phenomenal football player. You know, sometimes I hate to brag on him because I'm his dad, but the guy can play football. You have every right to brag on your son now because he's probably going to be the two-time 
reigning offensive player of the year in the league when we get to next year. And, Coach, the fact that you have a guy like Jacob, so accomplished running and throwing the football, it opens things up for your running backs. Keon Williams sets a new Chattanooga record. He's got 29 career rushing touchdowns. Were you aware of that when he scored that second touchdown? Yeah, I told uh, Jeff Darden. I knew he was one away. I told Jeff Darden, I said, if we get close in the end zone, I want Keon scoring two touchdowns today. I want him to break the record today. And uh, fortunately, he did it. Uh, we tried to get it to him early, and then we had to run Jacob on the power play. But uh, I told Jeff uh, yesterday, I said, I want Keon to break this record today. And uh, Keon's a great kid and a great player for us and done so much for this program. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for him. It's a great deal. Finally, Coach, you know, we talked offensive and defense. Talk about your special, special teams, because I think that gets lost when we talk about your success. But you got to point to the special teams as well. Well, it starts with our two kickers, our punter and our kicker, and then, and then Nick's our punter and our kickoff guy. And for the most part, he puts the kickoffs exactly where we want them. He had one that wasn't good today, and they, they popped it a little bit on us, but he punched the ball great. Enrique Ribeiro has been unbelievable on field goals. I think now he's 15 to 17. Uh, it's, it's, it's automatic every time he gets out there. Uh, really, really pleased with him. Uh, and, then, and then our cover units are, are doing a great job. B.J. Hogan's our special teams coordinator, and uh, he does a great job with them. These guys have bought in. Uh, uh, our, our coaches do a great job of scheming it up. Uh, you know, it's important, and we, we emphasize it big time, special teams. Coach, we'll let you go. Go celebrate in the locker room. Congratulations. You've taken your alma mater back to the playoffs. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you all. <laughs> Every phase of the game works for Chattanooga today. A very clear statement has been made as to why this is a team worthy of a top eight seed and a bye in the first round of the FCS playoffs. We've got more from Paladin Stadium. Mox onto the playoffs. They are perfect in SoCon play. King. Go fish. In your face, in your face. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy, and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. Which planet are we living on? What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. 
Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Regular season finale went a lot like the regular season for the Mox. Dominating fashion, they improved to 7-0, and finish off a perfect Southern Conference season. Darren Goldwater, Corey Miller welcoming you back to Paladin Stadium. Let's go right down to Jacob Huseman. We just talked to your dad, Jacob, who said four years ago it was a great day. You went up to him and said you're committing to Chattanooga. Not a lot of guys necessarily want to play for their dad as a head coach in college. Now you've taken his alma mater back to the playoffs, unbeaten in league play. Why did you commit to Chattanooga four years ago? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I, with him being the coach, I was at all the games, and I, you know, I, as as they won, I won. As they lost, I lost. And you know, I felt like already such a part of that team. Uh, you know that that we came down here and actually came from behind and won. And I was at that game, and I went up to the locker room and I said, I'm going to be a mock. And uh, you know. Because I already felt like I was such a huge part of this program, you know. Well, Jacob, you definitely are a huge part of this program. Of course, I've given you Mr. in front of your name. I call your dad Russ. You're now Mr. Huseman because when you can <laughs> run for 100 yards and throw for 257, four total touchdowns, complete player. Talk about this offense. The play calling was phenomenal today. Yeah, it really was. You know, they, they Coach Durden and those guys have done a great job all year long. With, uh, with calling plays that are going are gonna to put us in the best situation possible. And, uh, you know, all, all that's left for us to do is go out and execute, and fortunately we've been doing a better job of that lately. So it, it all kind of comes together when you've got the play calling and then, and then us going and, and actually executing the play. Jacob, it almost looks easy, the, and the numbers that you guys have put up through the Southern Conference have made it look pretty easy. It's been pretty dominating all year long, and again, it was today. So now you turn your attention towards the playoffs. You don't yet know who you're going to face. But what do you say as one of the leaders of the team, when you look these guys in the eye in the locker room and in the next week or two of practice, what do you say to the guys to keep them, as guess, I guess, as much on an even keel as they have been? You know, I think uh, we, we've got to treat it like another regular game. I, I don't think we can't tense up because it's the playoffs. I don't think we will, you know. It, It'll be interesting to see who we who we uh, play when we find out tomorrow. But uh, you know, honestly, it, it shouldn't matter as long as we go out and execute and prepare like we've been preparing. You know, I think that that will be just fine. Jacob, I, I saw some wrinkles today in the play call. And of course, uh, I like to call the oh what not screen to Shafat down in the red zone <laughs> for the touchdown. Uh, and then you ran that play again where you rolled out and threw across your body. Talk about that play. We've had both of those in the in the playbook for a while now. Uh, just got around to calling them. You know, we felt like if we showed boot, we felt like they were going to over pursue and it would leave somebody going back for the throwback. And and uh, you know, we were able to hit them on it twice. So, uh, you know, it's uh, like you said, it goes back to the play calling. Great play calling by Coach Durden and those guys. Well, Jacob, you are now uh, continuing to move up the charts, Southern Conference. Total yards, I know the, that's not exactly what's on your mind right now, but it's your 22nd win as a starter. That is now a new record for Chattanooga. What's the record that, that you're most proud of at the moment? Well, I guess uh, being 9-3 and three right now, because uh, that, that's the biggest team record, you know, and 7-0 and and in the conference. Uh, that, that's really something to be proud of. That It's a tough conference, you know. Uh, a lot of good teams in this conference, and, and to go undefeated throughout conference play is is a big time step. I, you know, I'm not sure if Chattanooga's ever done that, but I'm sure Mr. Blackman will have to check for me on that one. But final question for you, Jacob: When you look at your style of play, an NFL guy comes to my mind. A guy by the name of Russell Wilson, a dual threat guy. You know, he runs it, he throws it, and I, and I want to congratulate you on your decision making at the line of scrimmage, so you should be proud of that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Russell Wilson actually went to uh, my rival high school when we lived in Virginia. He, I was just a freshman. He don't remember me then, but <laughs> <laughs> next I, time, I really appreciate you saying that, though. The yes, next sir. time you see him, you can say, hey, Corey Miller made, uh, made a comparison. Congratulations. <laughs> it is the first time in Chattanooga history that the Mocs have gone unbeaten in Southern Conference play. We'll let you get All back right. to it. Thank you.
Jacob Huseman, the reigning offensive player of the year in the Southern Conference, and a good chance he'll be the two-time reigning offensive player of the year when all is said and done when the awards come out. I, I like him a lot. I, I think when you talk about maturity, you talk about how he controls the offense. He's an extension of his dad on the football field. There's a calmness out there. He makes great decisions with the football. He knows when to throw it, when to run it, knows when to get, when to get him out of a play. When you got a quarterback like that, you have a chance in the playoffs. Coach Huseman told us this week the goal for the coaching staff was never to go under beaten in Southern Conference play. They just wanted to win the title outright, and that's something they did two weeks ago. They are the only unbeaten team in the Southern Conference. So here are the final standings. The players talked about it. Right. Coach Houston said, yeah, we heard them talking about it. The players wanted to go unbeaten in Southern Conference play, and they have done just that. They ran away with the league, far and away, the most consistent best team in the Southern Conference this year. Well, I think it's about being complete. You know, we talked about the offense, and we talked about Williams, we talked about Houston, we talked about Toll on the defense side of the ball, and the special teams. When you look at it, every phase of the game, they're really good at it. And the coaching, I mean, the X and O's, throwing in those wrinkles, you know, the screen play down in the red zone, throwing across the body when they took advantage of the aggression of Furman's defense. This is a complete football team that can make some noise in the playoffs. And very good on the defensive end as well. Davis Tull will probably become the second three-time winner Ooh. of the Defensive Player of the Year Award. The other guy, Dexter Coakley from App State, oh. went on to a nice career in the NFL. We've got more from Paladin Stadium. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Get your You're not in here. Yes, I am. No, no, no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Which planet are we living on? Earth. 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 Right here. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. after him today. We're not here to play well. We're not here to play close. We're here to win the game. And you got a great opportunity today, a great opportunity to set the stage for the rest of the season. Let's go get it done.
great day for the ball. The Chattanooga Mox are the current taste of the Southern Conference. Maybe the Mercer Bears will be the future of the Southern Conference. Next year will be their second year in the league. A very impressive first year. Not quite as impressive as the year put together by the Chattanooga Mox. They felt they were wrongly left out of the playoffs last year. It was the purpose all season long to get back, and that's where they're going. First time since 84, the Mox are headed to the playoffs, maybe with a bye. It's been a pleasure for ASN to broadcast Southern Conference football this year. The first basketball game will be December 3rd, live on ASN. For Corey Miller and our crew, I'm Darren Goldwater.